<laughs> it's funny, I saw somebody write in all capitals. Exclamation point. Sus? Question mark question. Like, where is he? How's it going? Ow! Fuck my elbow! <laughs> I'm sorry. Ow. Oh, that was a bad one. That was right in the spot that just shuts you off for like a full two minutes. E why? Why does it always do that? Why is it always that same spot? It's always there. I couldn't try to do that if I wanted to again. <sighs> Anyways, how you doing? Happy almost 4th of July. Not quite there yet, but it's tomorrow. Uh, it is very, very hot. It's currently... How hot is it right now in Vegas? It is... Uh, it's 112 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. It is fucking brutal. Oh, I'm sitting here drinking a cold drink. Somebody say only, only 112 degrees. I love it like this though. I actually, there actually might be something wrong with me. I really do like it. But hope you're doing good. Gonna play sorcery today. I got a plan for this week, if you'd like to hear it. Can you please do the Steve Jackson's sorcery thing that you do sometimes? Wait, what did you say? <laughs> I already did it. It's in the title. That's what the title is. Well, actually, hold on. It would be Steve Jackson's... <laughs> All right, I forgot to put Steve Jackson's in the front because it's Steve Jackson's <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. I got it wrong. Mods. 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 Can you fix it? Yeah, so we're going to play Sorcery. Uh, I'm going to kind of beat the heat tonight, today. Just going to chill out, have some fun. I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. So that's what we're doing today. Do this for like three or four hours. From there, on Thursday, we're going to play Trepang 2. I believe that game has released. I'm going to play it for a little while on Thursday. And then on Saturday, we're probably going to do a Browser Berry stream. Where I get a bunch of browser games and browser quizzes and just do Browser Berry. Plan. Uh, let me go over the house flipper stuff. There's a lot of people saying, "What is? What are you talking about?" Today's supposed to be the house flipper invitational stream, and yes, I agree. It's supposed to be today, but um, I forgot it was the Fourth of July tomorrow. A lot of people, their timings. Um, I didn't want to be like, "Hey, yeah, let's uh, come to the house flipper invitational stream." Um, I think it's just easier to get more people to. to be involved. So, next week, I'm planning for next week. I'll give you a date. Everybody else seems to agree that I've been talking to so far that next week is probably just better anyways. Shooting for probably the 11th. It might change, but it's going to be the week that of the 11th. It's a delay Andy moment. Well, I wanted to get as many people as I could. So the more available people can be, the better. And I didn't want to go to scheduling conflicts with people. There's other stuff going on. There's, you know, 4th of July. And yeah, I figured it would just be easier to do it next week. I'm glad you moved it. I can only be here for like 15 minutes right now. That's another thing too. Yeah, I just let's, let's get it away from the 4th of July. What happened to House Flipper? I think you just clicked on the stream one second ago. Yeah, which, I mean, look, the stream just started. I understand that. I, you may have just got here a second ago. Right at the... When I ended the last sentence. <laughs> I did. All right. Yeah, there we go. All right. So rewind. Rewind. Literally 10 seconds. That's so funny. See, and now let me just... Okay. This is amazing. I'm glad this happened. So you see now why I usually say, wait, I don't want to talk about something yet. 
well, we need to wait like 20 to 30 minutes into the stream. People are like, just fucking say it already. Oh, he's stalling. He's stalling. No, no, I want to wait. Oh, he wants to wait for people to quote, trickle in. Yeah. Do you see now why we do this? You're a liar. You can't rewind. <laughs> no, not trickle down. That's not what I just said. <laughs> yeah, you gotta let people trickle in. People have to open the stream. I, I Look, some of you get, get here really quick. But for an announcement, we usually have to wait for people to get here. There's traffic. There is traffic. Just go. I, I am. All right. So here we, here's the deal. Browser Barry this weekend. Great paying on Thursday. So let's race today. Great paying is really good. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Bark, bark, bark. Who's barking? Why are you barking? Stop barking at us. It's fire. Tripang is fire. All right. Yeah, the Sorcery Enjoyers Council. Uh, you can rejoice because I think a lot of you, and I have to give myself some credit here, a lot of you just thought, like, oh, yeah, fuck this guy. He, we're, like, forcing him to play this. He's he, It's been a year since he played it last. He's just doing this to like shut everybody up that wants to see it and he'll probably just never play it ever again. This is the third or fourth stream since we came back to it a year later. Do you see what's going on here? I want you to, I would like you to say sorry to me because I saw comments that were like, oh yeah, I'm making these up by the way. Oh yeah, he's never going to play it again. He's only doing it once. I made all those up, but I'd like the imaginary people to apologize to me, please. All right, let's go. <laughs> you made them all up. You made up all you. What did you say? You made all those one comment up. What about Demon Souls remake? Um, I don't know. I, I yeah, maybe. I'm a. Can I tell you that I'm afraid to play the Demon Souls remake? Can we go over why? The Demon Souls remake? Go over it? Yeah, okay, alright. A lot of you saying no, but that's fine. It's my stream. Um, so I put Demon Souls up in like the top three of From Software games. And I'm kind of afraid that I'm gonna play the remake. And it's going to be shown to me in full HD, in full color. That, that That's not the case or something. It's scary to me. That's probably what is going to happen. Because I told you, I went back and played Dark Souls 3 off stream. And I have told you guys that Dark Souls 3 was like, oh man, it's definitely up in like the top three, top four for From Software games. And I played through Dark Souls 3 and I was just like, I fucking hate this game. I was like, what happened? Why do I hate this? I, I love this one, don't I? I like really like this one. And then I played through Dark Souls 1 off stream again. And I was like, fuck, this is good. I hate this one though, don't I? I'm afraid to play Dark Souls 2. I'm going to play Dark Souls 2 and it's going to be my favorite game of all time. I'm afraid of that. Dark Souls 3 sucks. I don't no, I don't think so. I really don't think so. But it's weird because <laughs> I was okay. So Holly's sitting next to me. And she's like, oh, just we're gonna sit down and hang out and play games on the couch or whatever, right? And it really did feel like every few hours I would kind of glance over and be like, uh, th uh this area sucks. This is like one of the everyone that kind of agrees this is one of the worst areas in the game. And it kind of felt like I was saying that for every area in the game. And I think she was like, what area is good? I'm like, well, I mean, that's good. 
I like I kind of forgot like what I liked about Dark Souls 3. Every few hours. <laughs> Bro knows Dark Souls 3 sucks. No, it really doesn't. I just think you know what I think it is? On a second, third playthrough of some of these games, you st you start to go, "Ah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that that guy that jumps out there." Yeah, what the fuck? Like when you know what these games, the tricks these games play, you kind of are like, yeah, what the hell? Yeah, why would you do that to me? Why did you do that to me? It was new to me when I first played it, but like, yeah, now I'm doing it again. It's like, why would you do that to me? I'm so mad at you. All from software games. And this is the thing, when you make like a from software tier list, they're all good. They're all good. They all sit in this book of wonderful video games. They all, no, they, they all suck. No, they don't. They're in a league of their own. Yes, they are. VR Josh just asked me, do you ever worry you get to an age where you just can't beat a Souls game anymore? Like you won't be able to beat Bloodborne again because your motor, motor skills and reaction times have diminished? Yeah. I mean, no, that's a, that's a good point. It is. Like, when Dark Souls... I don't know. When Dark Souls 7 comes out... Will I actually be able to beat it? Or will I go back and be like, Yeah, I remember when I could do this. Wow, how was I? I was very... You know, no, 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 hold on. Wait, wait, wait. This is like sports shit. If I could throw a football 100 yards when I'm like 25... When I'm 70, I can remember when I could throw the football 100 yards. I can't do that anymore, but I used to. I used to be able to do that. And yeah, that's that's fine. Like, oh, you should have seen me when I got up to the plate. I could hit a home run. It's like, Grandpa, you can't do that anymore, but you could before. That's fine. That doesn't bother me. You did this rant while fighting Melania. I'll be honest with you. I don't remember fighting Melania. I'll watch clips of that fight and the, like the, the, the six hours that I over, over, over a few streams. I don't remember any of it. I just, I don't remember that entire fight. I just remember just, I don't, I just don't know. I remember talking about how I put like a black and white filter on and was pretending that it was like back in like the, like the 1920s or something. I don't, I don't remember much else. We don't want to talk about you getting old. It makes us sad. Every, we all we all get older. Okay. It's it happens to everybody. It's happening to me right now. It's gonna happen to all of us. So why don't we talk about something a little nicer? Let's talk about the sunflowers and the update that you're not going to receive uh, today because we're not ready to show it. But uh, almost all the heads are open for the sunflowers. We have the. We've got all the colors. Not going to spoil it. For those of you that... Uh, it's really cool to do the sunflower uh, loot box. Because you can get variety of sunflowers that are different colors. There's red. There's purple. Yellow. Uh, brown. There's all kinds of varieties of sunflowers. So when you do the loot box, you just kind of pick random seeds. And you put it, you know, put it in the ground, take care of them. You don't know what they're going to look like. You don't know what color they're going to be. So it's really, really cool to watch it go from seed, take months to grow. You see the head forming. You're like, what color is that going to be? That's going to be interesting. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. If you're, uh, all right. If you're going to bat chest the sunflower shtick on this channel, be gone. Be gone, is what I would say. You don't bat chest the su uh, I'm sorry. When That's not how this works. Be gone. Go. Be go. Go. <laughs> you said loot box. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just making a reference to. Stop this at once. Yeah. Nature. Bat chest. Nature. I recommend to everybody to 
could take seeds. Go for go from seed to full plant. They become like children. It was it was a little windy here recently. And I remember being like, oh my, our children, we have to save them. Okay, wait, maybe we can block the wind out and save them. Like they become like actual children. No, we don't want them. Our sunflowers are going to get, the wind is going to take them. They're going to be hurt by it. When you do it from seed to full plant, you're out there every day and you're making sure the soil is okay. What's the temperature like? What, what direction are they facing? How many, how much nutrients have they taken in this week? It's it's actually remarkable. It's re I, all jokes aside, I really do recommend that you do it. I feel like it changes your perspective on a lot of things. I feel like you really, it, it really does. When you see something grow over the course of a few months and you did that and you helped, I think it, it makes you think a little differently. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, with all my parcels of land, that's the thing. A lot of flowers and a lot of plants do very well in a pot. Doesn't you don't need a whole lot of space. You need water, sunshine, and a in a, a decent a little pot to put them in. Plant father, plant dad. God complex. <laughs> oh man, I really like, you know, seeing the 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 work you put into something and having it grow and and you take care of it and you can wow like i feel so happy about like contributing to maybe to nature and what a god complex you have <laughs> you're growing weed i'm not no i'm not growing weed i'm growing sunflowers marigolds and wildflowers Okay. Can I turn? Can I start the stream already? It's been like forty-five minutes. All right, let's go. So a story time. But I want—we need to talk about it. I want to—I don't—I just want to—I want to talk sometimes. This guy thinks he's inventing oxygen. See how windy it is here? You see, you, you hear that, right? All right, this is where we were. Uh, for those of you that need a little recap, we can do it quickly. As you see, the seven serpents are coming after us. We did most of the swamp last time. We got some info on this is the earth serpent and the water serpent. We are on our way to go here. What did it say about the Earth Serpent? It said something, right? I don't think sunflowers produce oxygen. No, but they... Hey, look. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And and listen to this. What do they do? Yeah, they, I'm sure they do. All plants do. I was just reading a chat. I was reading a chat message. <laughs> uh, I you just threw me off so bad. Well, I was thinking, what, what was I going to say? Shit, there was a really important point there. Oh, and not only that, you get to you get to if you sit out there, and yes, I know stalling, stalling, whatever. This is fine. We, I, it's just, just relax. You get to see, if you just sit out there and just kind of watch, we have these big, tall sunflowers. And you get to see kind of the whole world that you're not paying attention to. But when you start to pay attention, you start to recognize little creatures. There's a hummingbird that keeps coming back. And we recognize this hummingbird. It's like it's the same one every time. There are a couple of, uh, they're wasps, but they're, 
I believe they're, are there be there's bees, there's wasps. I think they're potter wasps is what we're seeing. And obviously honeybees and um, big bumblebees. You start to recognize almost like individually you remember what they look like. It's like, wait, I'm, they're here every day. Nature is so cool with the bat chest. Well, let me tell you something. Yeah, that's okay. You go get a pot. You go plant a seed. Take care of it. And take a look at it. And make it a little hobby. And you come back and tell me how you feel. Go do it. Go do it. And 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 when you and when you fucking water that plant for the first time, really, when it's tall enough, and you see this thing just kind of come to life. It's like, wait, hold on, like an hour ago, your leaves were kind of a little bit facing down, but now they're way up in the air. You can see it in real time. It's like, holy shit. Wow. Cool. Remember, we have human children. We understand. Do the wizard voice. <laughs> you have... Okay. Oh, anyways. Oh, down the slope we go to find what could be potential disaster waiting for us. You make it way. I like plants. Uh, you make your way down the mountainside slowly, being careful. Wait, we didn't even do the recap. Yeah, we did. All right, so we're going down here. We, the Lake Iklala. We had a run-in with the time serpent. The water serpent. Did we know what the weakness for the earth serpent was? It's probably in the... Uh... Spellbook. Clues, where is it? All right, the Earth Serpent. The Earth Serpent's weakness. Becomes weakened when it loses contact with the ground. All right, so we need to... Probably gonna have to blow the horn. You're a fucking weirdo. Just wait till you have your own plants. I, dude, I walked by plants like, oh, whatever is this green thing that grows out of the ground. I was like that for years. But once you actually get in there and you take care of one, and it grows from seed all the way, we have children. I don't care. Okay, we know what to do. Dude thinks he's the only gardener. I didn't say that. I'm just saying for those of you that don't have never thought about it, it's actually a really nice, interesting hobby. It's nice. It gets you outside, gets the sun in your face. You look up, you just kind of close your eyes and just like, ah. This is a crazy Dave take. We have children. You don't have children. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what the percentage of people that have kids in this community is. I don't know how high it is. Even if it's like 30 per, even if it's 40 to 50%, that means half of you don't. It's probably like maybe 10% of everybody here. 20% maybe. Alright, that was the plant podcast. Let's go. Oh, by the way, um, me and Holly were sitting outside and a hummingbird flew and floated in front of us for like 10 full seconds. And I, it, it, it was magical. Yeah? Alright, whatever. Yeah, what do you know? Alright, you make your way down the mountainside slowly. Being careful with your footing on the scree. The rising winds finger at your hair and cloak. The road down the slope passes a small stone house. The aged wooden door stands a crack ajar. Look inside. You peer inside the house. It is dark inside. But you can make out furniture coated by layers of dust. It seems that this place is in no is no ruin, but has clearly been uninhabited for some time. Enter. The door creaks on its own. It's worn hinges as you push it open. Now, where is this? Am 
My childhood friend once ate a huge bee. All right, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> what do I say to that? Like, what, you, like, they opened their mouth and a bee flew in? What are you talking about? Yeah, was their name Eric? Was it your buddy Eric? Hold on, what does this person say? Sunflowers freak me the fuck out. It's like they see everything around them, and I swear, once a sunflower called me a sunless loser or whatever. It was, I mean, that was kind of funny. They move. They move around. If you, you look, okay, these sunflowers at 10 o'clock in the morning, they're facing a different direction. Then, like, four hours later, they are completely moved. They're facing a completely different direction. They move around. They're alive. They're alive, and we have to take care of them. Okay, anyways. It's because they're facing the sun. Yeah, they move. Alright, the inside of the hut is simple, but as you saw, well kept. In the center of the room is a table with one wooden stool, and in one corner is a straw mattress cot. A cauldron sits in a hearth with a roasting spit above it. By the far wall is a sculling boat. Let's look in the cauldron. You peer into the cauldron, but if there was ever anything edible inside, it has long since turned to dust. The pot is quite empty. Under the table. You peer under the table, looking for trap doors or long-lost items, but there's nothing of interest there. The boat. It is clear that the boat is an ornament, or else the owner intended to repair it, but made no progress. It has several planks missing, no paint, and woodworm has been burrowing constellations into its sides. But once, it must have been a serviceable coracle. It is clear there is nothing here. You turn to go, and that is when you see the skeleton, tied to the wall above the door frame. Leave quickly or look at the skeleton. Look at the skeleton. You stare up at it. The figure must have been a big man once. He has wide leg bones, now strapped with leather through iron pins hammered into, into the stone. And his shoulders are broad and stocky, now attached to hooks that still bear the trace of blood. His empty skull hangs low, socket staring at the floor. Aside from the gruesome nature, there is something very strange about it all. Hmm. What can we do? Zap. I don't know why we would electrocute the skeleton for no reason. Can I read the skeleton's mind? Bro, you don't even do voices anymore. What the hell? I'm the narrator. There is nobody. Here. There's no quotes. There's nobody. To it's not like the skeleton perks his head up and says, "Hello, traveler." Like there's no. I'm. I'm the narrator. The narrator doesn't doesn't have a funny voice. The narrator is telling you what's going on in the room. Why would I do big? Res resurrect the dead. Should I resurrect this? Can I resurrect this guy? I have holy water. I this I think I only have one. Hold on, you're gonna see the background for a second. Sorry. Let's do it. You take the vial of holy water from your pack and cast your spell. The water begins to shimmer and shine with an inner light. Then you toss the holy water at the hanging skeleton. After a moment, the spell takes effect and the creature's head suddenly lifts up. The skull turns this way and that, and the arms tug at their restraints. Who are you? The skeleton's head snaps around as though searching for you. It tugs and pulls at its bonds once more and its jaw flaps, but it seems unable to speak.
All right, now we do tell. Yep, 100%. You weave the stars into order around you, pulling on the cloth skull cap as you do. The creature's thoughts enter your head, musty and confused, as though covered in dust. He seems to be in a state of terror, unable to breathe or see, but he believes these things to be the result of a powerful wind that has pinned him here against the wall, snatched his breath, and forced his eyes closed. What happened? You try to guide his thoughts back to before the wind began. And the last thing he remembers is an image of opening the door to reveal a towering coiled serpent that opened its mouth and created a hurricane. And that is all. The skeleton struggles and tugs, but it is clearly very dead. As the spell does not last long, after a few more rattles, it falls still. You leave the hut to continue your walk. Oh, shit. <laughs> um. Do we go try to confront? I think I, I think we can confront the Earth Serpent. Let's confront the Earth Serpent because I have the horn. Which should make quick work of the Earth Serpent, according to the clues. You pick your way down the slope and meet the old road. The sun continues to climb the steep sky. You stand in the foothills of the mountains. Looking east, the wide waters of Lake Eklala gleam in the sunlight. A high point of the rocks would make a good place to stop and eat. Just to the south is a deep fissure in the land, as though something gigantic had stamped its foot and cracked the earth. Throw the sun serpent orb into the fissure. How do we actually kill the sun serpent? Actually, I don't remember. I'm going to throw him in there, and he's going to just come out and, and kill us. <laughs> Stir says you won't collab with him. I, I invited Stir to the House Flipper stream. What are you talking about? <laughs> You're just making shit up. Okay. You stand in the foothills of the mountains. Yeah, okay. So what, should we look in the in the fissure? What do you guys want to do? Did it happen already? Nope. Fourth of July is moving it to next week. I'm shooting for the 11th, July 11th. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get a bunch of people there. I don't want to give you exactly who's going to be there because I don't know. And people have different schedules and trying to work around a lot. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Don't worry. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun. And like I said, nobody, nobody has to do it. Don't, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's a fun thing just to do. And if, if, if it works out, it works out. I think we're just going to look in, look in the fissure. You didn't tweet this stream? I didn't? Oh, I didn't. It's just sitting here waiting to be tweeted. Does it really matter if I do this? All right, I did it. You know, I haven't... Can we talk about... I know, this is like a podcast stream. I have not looked at, like, Twitter analytics to see if anybody even clicks on this. I just do it. I just I just tweet every stream. I don't even know if it's doing anything. I think I want to go look at this and see if... Oh, yeah, it's... The engagements of, of your... I'm live right now stuff. Like, eight people clicked on it. I don't know. I have no idea. It's something that I just started doing and got used to doing. It became a routine nearly 10 years ago. So it's just like, oh, I just, I just, I tweet every time I'm live. But I won't tweet a banger like this. <clears throat> Which, I, this is just the way it is. Yeah, I won't tweet a banger like this.
Sitting on the toilet in the hotel, I glance over at the mirror. I see someone in the shower looking at me. I get into fucking attack mode, ready to elbow drop a motherfucker. It's one of those beveled edge mirrors that at the right angle shows two of you in different spots. Like, that one is pretty good, I think. <laughs> Do I have to give context? Alright. So, no, I, I don't have to give context. I was sitting on the toilet in a hotel one time, and I was just sitting there, and the mirror was, like, in the at a level where I could see the mirror sitting on the toilet. I look over, I see myself. The mirror had beveled edges, so it was, like, almost like a double kind of mirror. So, there were two people in the mirror, and it looked like one of them was in the shower. And I was like, I have to fucking fight somebody on the toilet. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to fucking fight. I'm ready to attack somebody. And then it was like, it was like a half of a second. What does beveled edges mean? It means that there's like a, it's like a, I don't know, I just said it! It means that, the, the, I could explain this, I'm just, you got me under, under stress right now. A beveled edge mirror is there's a, okay, there's a long rectangle. That's a mirror. There's a section that is, there's a, a gap in between another section that kind of sticks out. So it's technically like two mirrors. Do you know, do you understand what I'm saying when I say this? It's like got angled edges and there's a gap in between. You know, you got, you have to know what I'm talking about. It's like curved, like down a little. You, everyone knows what I'm talking about. You're just saying this to make me look like a weirdo. Like a photo frame, yes. But those beveled, those edges were large, very large. It wasn't just like a little, like half inch or an inch. Those beveled edges were probably like four or five inches long. That's why this kind of illusion happened. We have kids, we know what a beveled mirror is. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, now, <laughs> no more discussions. I have to, pl I'm playing sorcery. Move on, play. That's what I'm saying, and uh, I'm, I'm doing it right now. Are you, you thought it was a two-way mirror? No, there were two heads in the mirror. I looked over, my head was in the bevel, and my head again was copied up in the actual mirror. Therefore, me thinking there was another person in the fucking room hiding in the fucking shower. So I like, I freaked out for a tenth of a second. I was like, oh, that's just me. All right, let's go. You're so sassy today. I'm just, I'm in a good mood. I'm in a really good mood today. So, that's why I'm like this right now. I'm in a very, like, talkative... I'm just... I'm, I'm in a good mood. Alright, here we go. You stride boldly to the edge of the fissure and peer over the edge to look for the serpent. You can see nothing but an endless drop. Didn't it say that the serpent was in the fissure? It did, right? Hiding in a fissure. Okay. Yeah. This, this piece of shit's in here. Try step back. You keep watching. Suddenly a rock explodes out of the ground, just a few spans from where you stand. It begins to roll down the slope towards the fissure, but then abruptly it stops, reverses direction, and begins to roll towards you. Do I just... Stay still. Dodge left or dodge right? I'm a dodge left guy. If you've watched any From Software playthroughs, I seem to only dodge left and back. Yep. You dodge left and the rock shoots past you, impacting into dust against an overhang. The rumbling is growing louder. An even bigger explosion is coming.
Could do shield. Can I do wall? Uh, magic protection. Fog. Summon darkness. That's an interesting one. Create a force field. That might be helpful. I can't float. Um, I could blow the horn. I don't think I want to blow the horn right now, though. I haven't. We haven't seen the serpent. I don't want to burn through his stamina either. Uh, Doze is slowness. That might be a good idea. Slow everything down. Will that slow me down? Force field seems the smartest. But it's also three stamina. Yeah, let's go for it. You cast the spell, forming a shimmering force field around your body. You should be protected from all but the most serious injury now. Just in time, the rock surface explodes, and you are showered with falling stones. They bounce harmlessly off your force field. But you are knocked off your feet all the same. The ground opens up directly where you fall, forming the shape of a freshly dug grave. In the bottom of the pit. Okay. You're at the bottom of a deep pit. Dust and small stones are still raining over the lip. With a pop, your force field shimmers out of existence. Look around. The walls of the pit are smooth, not carved, as though this pit had been drilled. There is no way to climb out. The earth below is creaking and hissing with steam. You're about nine feet below the rim of the pit. You may be able to jump and grab the edge, but it is unlikely. Suddenly, a rocky protrusion breaks through the pit floor. It glows red. It is boiling hot. Look at the spike. The spike of rock sticks up from the floor. It glows a deep and boiling red, and steam rises from its sides where it touches the cold air. As you consider your options, you feel something bite your ankle. Uh-oh. Doc? This is not poisonous, is it? I don't have a potion. Zen? I could hover. That might not be a bad idea. Fix caused fixedness. You should use... <laughs> oh, sorry. Not a bad idea. Mud. I don't want to waste my sand. I'll, let me, I'll float. Let's hover. You craft the enchantment, and the medallion begins to glow as you rise gently into the air. Float out of the pit. You float up out of the pit, which fills with burning hot rocks and lava just as you escape. Okay, outside the pit. You are out of the pit, but the danger is by no means past. Cracks are radiating across the ground. One opens between your feet. I feel like we wait. Uh, should I jump clear? What do you think? I think I'm going to wait. Wait. You wait. The crack opens below you and you tumble into a fissure in the rock. Oh, God damn it. Pray to the ape. You close your eyes and raise a prayer to the ape. A moment later, another crack opens, collapsing one wall of the space that holds you. You scramble quickly out. Turning, you spot a large boulder on top of the rise where you pause to rest 
teetering. God damn it. <laughs> Where is this motherfucker? <laughs> Dodge left. You prepare to dodge, but find something is holding your leg. A small green snake has wrapped itself around your ankle and is attempting to bite. Run it through. You draw your sword to run the creature through when suddenly it begins to grow in size. The skin blisters and breaks, and a huge winged serpent made of crystals and rock coils up, spitting stone shards as it hisses. This must be the Earth Serpent itself. Uh, throw something at it. I don't think we do anything. I, I, we just blow the horn. Weakness, we know it. We, we have the item still, right? Great wind, yeah. If you don't have a gale horn, this is, um, this is pretty scary. Great stench. Cause speed. Yeah. We know we have the clue. We know what to do. Here we go. Blow the horn. Reaching up to the constellations, you create the spell, raising the gale horn and blowing a shrill note. A powerful wind is summoned, striking the wings of the snake and lifting it up into the air. The serpent roars and hisses, but once off the ground, everything changes. The earth settles, and the serpent itself shrinks once more to the size of a small snake. Should I let it land, or should I just strangle it? Let it land? I don't know if I want to... I, I could... No, I don't think so. I think we have to kill it right now. Strangle. You catch the creature's throat in one fist and throttle the life from it. It rattles, gasps, and then hangs limp from your fist like an old rope. The earth below is still. You have now defeated four of the seven serpents. Your weight returns and you settle gradually back down to the ground. The rocks around are smooth and unbroken. The whole thing might have been a dream, but for the piles of stone dust... That cover the ground. Gather some dust. You gather up the stone dust in your pack. You've dealt with more than half of the deadly serpents. Nice. Very nice. Hey, there's another one apparently right here. But. Alright, what do you guys think? Can we get a poll maybe? Go deal with the water serpent, or go up to the town. The town seems to be doing pretty poorly. Can we get a poll? I feel like I'm not sure. I feel like it could go either way. Uh, go up to the town, or down to this water serpent? Get 60 seconds. Maybe that's enough time for me to go pee, because I forgot to before I started streaming. Give me a second.
Okay, I'm back. I, that was quick. All right, up to the town. Let's go. I told you it was gonna be quick. Pants around ankles, standing pee. <laughs> God. You wash your hands? What? I, I, yes! What's your pee stance? We're not getting into... Can we bring up the sunflowers again? We're not getting into pee stances. What if you must know? Left hand on left hip. <laughs> I'm not even going to continue this. No. I, I, there are some, like, just dumb little non sequiturs and jokes that I will say, and then people go, oh my god, that's what he does! And then you'll, you'll post about it everywhere. It's like, I'm... No. You're not going to get it out of me today. Okay, we're going to go up to the town. Do you stand like Superman? Yeah, and I, and I go... And I, I sing that song until I'm, until I'm done. All right, all right, all right, all right. Ninety-five percent of the shit you hear is a joke. All right, we all know that. Just relax. The road curves gently as you follow it. Mid-afternoon heat makes the air damp. The stone underfoot turns into carved slabs, buried by layers of dust. Seems you are walking along what once was a wide, flagstoned road. You pause to look in the cracks between the stones. Sorry. You pause to look in the cracks between stones, hoping to perhaps find a gold piece or two buried under the topsoil. But there is nothing. This place has been scoured bare by the wind of centuries. Looking northwards, you can see the northern reaches of the Zanzunu Peaks. Somewhere there lie the ruins of an ancient city of Timpang, once filled with the Archmage's most devout followers. Interesting. Follow the road. You follow the old road. The afternoon is drawing on. A little dust blows across the surface of the ancient road. Suddenly you hear the sound of hoof beats. Something is coming towards you along the old stones. The next thing you know, you are knocked flying by a low armored creature. It is a roach pig. Uh, we, this is just automatic. It's, it's jig every time, it's automatic. If you have the fluid, it's automatic. <laughs> you pull the bamboo flute out and start to play. The pig abrupt, abruptly halts its charge and then awkwardly shuffles up onto its hind legs and begins to sway from side to side. Uh... Dance until it drops, or dance it away up the road. Just up the road. Just get out of here. You keep playing, directing the creature to hop, skip, and run along the old flagstones until it is far out of sight. Its wobbling, bloated form makes for quite a cheerful sight. When it is out of sight, you lower your pipe, and you continue on your way. Follow the road. The road curves gently as you follow it. The evening is drawing in. It will be night soon. The road passes between the pillars of a ruined stone gate and then opens out into a wide plaza of low ruins. Look at the gate. Well, look at the ruins. Door frames jut from the unforgiving sands. 
Windows stare like dead eyes from buildings molded into the rising cliff itself. This place must have been magnificent once. But now even the specters must have been shredded by the wind. I just said, I hate you. Will you just chill out? Just chill out. It's all right. Just relax. We can, we can just, it's all right. Just relax. All right. The pillars were maybe once carved. One is set with what looks like a jaguar. The other, some kind of winged goat. Perhaps this place was once walled. But there's nothing there now. The pillars are covered in patches of green moss. Ooh, we, this is edible. It's wet and pungent. Just, yeah, let's eat it. You pop the moss. We've eaten this moss before. You pop the moss into your mouth and chew. A moment later, you are gagging and choking. This moss is foul and disgusting. With a flavor like rotting meat. You spit the moss on the ground. Wrong moss. Yellow moss was the edible one. Oh. Well, it's okay. The silent city echoes to the sound of your footsteps on the road. You are aware you are headed away from Zaman and not towards it. But perhaps the ruins of this place will have something to aid you. Let's check it out. I know we're going to be going here. You follow the outline of a street into the first of several open plazas. It seems this was once a city, hewn in vertical layers into the northern cliff face itself. Now, it is as though a great clawed creature has scratched it from existence. A few dwellings remain, but more, uh, most are broken pillars. Only one structure remains standing, a tower that rises somewhere to the west. The sun lowers towards the horizon, Soon it will be dark. The foul flavor of the moss from the gate is still not quite left your mouth. Okay. <laughs> Every time I've watched your streams, I've done so while eating a burrito. When you read that last passage, when you read it, about eating moss, I started salivating. I now have a Pavlovian response to your streams in which I crave meat and tortilla. That's... <laughs> well, as long as you're eating well, okay? You can see my background for a sec. Okay. You're unconsciously, yeah. <laughs> now I'm craving meat and tortillas. Look what you did. Everybody right now is like, oh, oh my god, that sounds so good. You just did that to everybody here. Think about that. Think of the power you just have right now. Okay, the ruins of the city are quite extensive. Whatever happened here is... It happened to me. Uh, give me a sec. <clears throat> Alright. Whatever happened here, carne asada? Is that what you're talking about? Because, damn. Whatever happened here, it scooped away great sections of the city. As though the streets were raked by gigantic claws. The grandest houses are those near the cliff face. Further from the slope, the dwellings become smaller and less remains. Clouds rumble as they roll across the dimming sky. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go up here first, because it's closest. We made five minutes of progress in an hour. And the, the first, like, 30 minutes was we were doing a podcast. The high city. You head upwards towards the cliff face, jumping over cracks in the ground, and then clambering from the roof of one building into the gaping doorway of the next. Mosaics in the floor and painted walls speak of great wealth, but their patterns can no longer be discerned. Let's search. You search every corner and look through every window and crack, but you find nothing. It seems that when whoever lived here left, they took everything they could carry with them. On the highest street above the city, you find a house, perhaps the grandest so far, whose stones are daubed in bright red paint. Go inside. You look inside the walls of the red-painted house. 
Nothing remains, of course, just the outlines in the stone of a small room, with a fire pit at the back. Something white lies in the hearth, perhaps the remains of something long since burned. You go over to the fireplace, and what look at first like discarded dice turn out to be a set of teeth. You turn them over in your hands, trying to place what creature they are from. Giant, a goblin, a snatacat, an ape, human. I don't know. We have plenty of goblin teeth. We have a few giant's teeth. I don't Can we even do anything with... With the ape teeth? Snatacat, maybe? Ape? No. Ape teeth are like human teeth, only larger, and these are sharp and curved. Snatacats, then. Of course, they have the curved, talon like profile of a big cat's tooth. You have found three, but what use they are. Uh, let's take them. You place them in your pack. You now have seven teeth. Quite a collection. All right. Get going. You continue along the curving street until you pass a large doorway in the surprisingly intact ruins of a hall. Lying in the doorway is what looks like a massive, oversized finger. Look at the finger. A dead giant, perhaps. If so, you might be able to acquire a few more precious teeth to add to your collection. You follow the line of the finger inside the building along the length of an arm that disappears under a pile of rubble and stones. Kick the finger. I feel like I should do this in case it's still alive. You kick the finger and nothing happens. Okay, just in case. Unbury the arm. You go over to the rubble and begin to haul it away. Once you have cleared a few rocks, you begin to see the first wisps of thick hair from the giant's beard underneath the stone. If he is in fact dead, he cannot have died too long ago. Maybe he's not dead. Keep working. You keep working, removing stones with an aim to reaching the giant's lower jaw. But after removing a flat slab of stone from across his mouth, you are struck by a hot, wet blast of breath. The giant is not dead at all. He is sleeping. <laughs> Creep away. I've got to get out of here. What can I do? Should I just cast Zap? Like into his face? <laughs> no. Sharpen blade? No. I don't want to attack. Turn to stone. Create an invisible wall. Float in the air. Just go big. All right, fine. It's only one stamina. I mean, it counters. It counters Yob. I'm. Um, let's do it. Uh oh. You cast a spell, swelling to tower over your surroundings, but your spell casting has clearly agitated the creature. It wakes instantly, roaring to its feet, throwing aside the rest of the stone that has fallen on it during its sleep and grabbing a club from nearby. This is bad. I mean, at least, even with Big, I'm up to his chest. I only have five stamina. <laughs> I can't, I have to defend. Oh, what? The giant shakes the ruin with a roar. The giant swings its club and comes for you. Determined to crack open your bones. You raise your sword to cover your enormous body as he tries to push you back with his great hand. You are mostly unhurt. He raises his club across his body defensively. Defensively. 
let's say like pub I don't know, maybe like a he might be doing zero. I'm gonna do one point seven. That's alright. Lumbering in, you move in, aiming to trap the giant against the far wall of the street. Teasing the giant with a passing blow, wearing him down. He flicks your attack neatly away with his club. He is left breathless, but otherwise unharmed. Smelling your fear, he stomps the ground with one enormous foot growling. He's coming in big. Really? You've got so much stamina to attack power to work with. You drop down, protecting yourself as best you can, as the giant swipes its terrible club. You step back, you are largely unscathed. Germa, I think you meant large inhale in the title. No, nope, I didn't. Uh, Steve Jackson's <laughs> sorcery. That was correct. Four. Oh, I'm dead. He's fucking crushed my head. You attempt an attack and suffer for it. The giant raises its enormous club and brings it crushing into you. The gigantic club catches you square on the side of the head. That cracking sound is your skull, splitting apart like a fruit. <laughs> this might be really hard with only five stamina. All right, small, but like 3.3. That should, um, all right, two. He stomps the ground with one enormous foot growling. I'm gonna go for 6.3. That was unbelievably enormous. Now we have to play it tactically. You strike again, readying a massive blow that could part stone. You stomp forward as the giant swings for your head. The giant stumbles suddenly. He is weakening. Enraged by your attack, he beats his club against his palm, readying himself. I'm going to defend. Smart. Okay. Okay. You are just in time to move away to one side. You are mostly unhurt. He raises his club across. He's okay, defensively. Three, four? Something. Let's go 1.0. All right. Lumbering and you move in and aiming to trap the giant against the wall. Okay. He is left breathless, but otherwise unharmed. His stupid eyes are watching you closely, not wanting to take a risk. Okay. I'm going full blast because I'm going to defend next one. That was a mistake on his part and he's dead. Should have defended. You lunge forward again, preparing a massive swing that could cleave a tree trunk. You pound for your opponent. Then your sword slips between the giant's ribs, and he falls, gasping his last in a noise like a gushing waterfall. <laughs> Sorcery. And he dies. You stagger back, wiping the sweat from your brow and regarding the fallen creature. It is far from its Shumantanti home. It must have become lost out here. Now it will never return. Take its teeth. You go to remove the giant's teeth, but before you can get your sword into the lower gum, the body of the creature begins to shrink by almost a hand span. A moment later, it shrinks again. Get the teeth quickly. You hurry over, aiming to work more quickly and have time to pry loose one tooth before the creature's mouth is shrunk to a normal human size, and you're unable to fit the blade of your sword into its mouth. But the tooth on the floor has shrunk as well. Soon you are lying by a dead body, holding one of its incisor teeth in your hand. Huh? This is a normal guy. I'm keeping it. 
You shove the tooth into your pouch, though it is a macabre souvenir of this poor wretch. Then you leave the body for whatever wild beasts inhabit these ruins at night. Your loop of the upper city is finished. Gradually, you shrink back down to your normal size. The sun is all but gone. It'll be dark soon. Maca what? Macabre? Maca how do you say it? Isn't that how you say it? Maca how do you say it? Macabre? It's macabre. It's not macabre? The R is silent. It's French. Did I just... Okay, wait. Did I just, like... Did I just, like, jalapeno that? Did I actually just jalapeno that? Oh, take one of those jal jalapenos, jalapenos, jalapenos. Oh, fuck. It's all right. You slightly did that? All right. <laughs> uh, I don't want to turn this on because this is going to bring the city back to normal. So let's go this way. You walk through the ruins of the buildings that spread across the floor of the valley. One seems to be a large warehouse, though whatever was stored here has been taken by the winds long ago. Keep exploring. You pick your way over a low wall and through the shattered outline of a family home. A vague depression in one corner indicates an old fire pit. Take a look. You scratch in the dirt of the fire pit for a time, but find nothing beyond a few shards of broken pottery. You leave the old house by what was once the doorway. Scratched on the doorstep is a chiseled mark, perhaps a drawing of some kind. Hmm. You squat to examine the marks. They were perhaps once more detailed and are almost worn away by the scoring dust. A cat, large and striped, is curled up into a ring for warmth. I mean, we could do the classic. Fireball. Warmth, right? Maybe I could throw a fireball into the... That makes sense. It's a lot of stamina, but it makes sense to me. How is safe passage, but I don't think that'll help us, really. You only have one stamina left if you do that. Do I, though? Oh. My crutch is gone. I can't use this anymore? I've been using this as, like, such a crutch? The ape is far from you now. Oh, because I prayed, like, 20 minutes ago. I don't have any heal- I don't have any- wait. Do I have any healing potions? Did I drink them all? A full game ago. There was one point where I had like five healing potions. Did I really drink them all? I have no food either. Really? You lost them in the water. Ah, oh, before you. You're starving, dude. I I know. I don't, but welcome to sorcery. There's there's not a McDonald's anywhere. Um. A large cat is curled up into a ring for warmth. It's definitely hot. I'm doing it. I'll have one stamina, Andy. That's fine. That was a pretty lazy Andy. Yeah, I, I don't, why did I even say that? That was very lazy. Fireball. Looking to the stars, you craft the magic, creating a ball of flame between your hands. The firelight gleams and flickers on the old stone walls, showing up the deep crevices and scoured stones. 
Every wall looks as though it was scraped by long clawed nails. The firelight also gleams off something green, trapped in a crack of stone. Investigate it. You go closer, perhaps pushing away the dirt with your fingertips. Perhaps was not there, but whatever. To uncover a gold jewel jammed between two stones. Perhaps this is where perhaps was, and I put it up in the other sentence for some reason. Perhaps it fell here, or perhaps someone wished to hide it. Perhaps it happens more than once in the second sentence. My brain decided to... That was weird. Okay, let me read this again. So, because there's people that are probably audio only right now that are like, what the fuck did he just say? You go closer, pushing away the dirt with your fingertips to uncover a gold jewel jammed between two stones. Perhaps it fell here, or perhaps someone wished to hide it. Okay. Let's dig it out. You set to work with your fingertips to dig the treasure free. It's tiresome work, but eventually it comes loose. You cannot quite believe your eyes. The jewel is an ingot of solid, smoothly worked gold. It is likely to be both valuable and useful in spell casting. A clever find indeed. The fireball finally gutters and goes out with a pop. You move away from the building with the carved step. Another night begins and you are suffering badly. You need to rest, especially after going all day without food. Uh, I actually might be soft locked because I need to sleep. If I get hurt by anything, I have to rewind to here, but that's not true. I would need to rewind before I casted the spell, maybe even back to the giant. Do the beacons heal you? Um, I don't think they do, but it's a safe place to rest usually. Let's just go. Tower will give you stamina, does it? But all the towers aren't the same. There might be something in here that hurts me. You follow the line of a broken street until you reach the base of the tower. Somehow, amidst all the leveled buildings, its walls stand firm. Yeah, sometimes there's like fucking animals in here. The door opens easily. The inside of the tower is much like the others you've seen, except that perhaps it was once decorated. The walls are hung with rotten strings and are set with empty candle brackets. I'm going to sleep here. You settle down in the quiet of the tower. You've eaten nothing today, but your pack is empty and you cannot ease your hunger. You're going to die to a rat? Close my eyes. You lie back and try to forget your troubles. You are unharmed here. And you do not dream. You lost considerable stamina. Reached Lake Iklala. Explored the city of Timpang. And you collected the Sun Serpent and the Earth Serpent. Meaning there are three serpents still out there. You could go up to the tower or back out to the street. All right, another beacon. This tower also has a brass cylinder set into its center with a glowing crystal at its heart. From here, the plan of the old city is quite clear. Winding streets and blocks leading towards and then up the cliff face. Though it has all been scrubbed clear, the stain of human habitation still remains. Activate the beacon. You activate the beacon and it sweeps into life. A just beam. So we could bring this town to the past and see what's going on here. I think that's a good place for it. We could also go to the road. There's this area here. Unfortunately, the serpent is the serpent's not here in the past. There is a town. Buy food in the town. That's priority number one, yeah. Let me make sure I get the whole thing though. Because that looks like all of it. So this is 
Tin Pang in the past. Looks pretty good. This is some elaborate shit. Whoa. Yeah, I don't know how many of you really. I know. I know we meme a lot on this channel and we fuck around a lot, but if you have not experienced this before, you should plant a couple of sunflowers and get sorcery episode one. Let's try it. It's really really fun. It's a really like nice time. <laughs> He's giving us homework. You ever read the actual books? No, I never read the books. The books... I probably will just buy them for collection purposes. The books were pretty elaborate. The books could not hold his attention. Well, here's the thing. So the books were copied and translated into this digital version. So from my understanding, it's almost... It's almost one-to-one, -one, the whole entire book series. If I were to get the books, I would probably want to buy them just for collecting purposes. The fourth one is different. Yeah. Books are pretty elaborate. Streamer can't consume... Con what do you mean? What? Books three and four are different. Is there combat in the books? Yeah, you have, you have to roll dice. I think you actually have to have a pen and paper and keep track of everything that you're doing. Fourth game is the worst part. Yeah, I mean, we can address the elephant in the room. The fourth book, fourth game, is kind of a mess. But it's still wonderful. It's kind of a mess, though. Game and book four are, like, kind of unbearable in some regards. And I, I don't tell, if people that don't know why, don't, nobody say anything because it's actually like a, a pretty major plot point. It's pretty spoilery as to why that is, but it's, it's, it's kind of awful in some ways, but okay, just no spoilers. Anyways. Can you please play Goosebumps Horrorland for the Wii on, um... I think he said Halloween. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know I'm going to be dressed up as, like, fucking Count Dracula, though. That is actually happening. Holy shit, please. Yeah, I'm doing... I'm going to be Count Dracula for Halloween this year. You butchered your playthrough of Book 4. It's easy to, though. I think it's really easy to butcher the fourth book. Anyways, um, let's touch the blue crystal because this, oh no, there we go. Yep, I'm good. You feel better for having touched the cylinder. Look at the view. Let's just take a look. Looking out across the city, it seems you can see two time periods at once, one fitting on top of the other, but it's impossible to tell which is true and which is the mask. You watch a child running down a street, only to turn the corner and disappear. You watch a dog spring into existence, mid-leap. A building throws yellow smoke into the air, but when the smoke clears, the building is ruined and broken. You cannot tear your eyes away. Every time the streets clear or a building falls, you feel your anger towards the Archmage rising. The desolation here is complete. The people you see are both still living and already long destroyed. Let's go investigate the major city of Timpang. Omega lull, omega, omega lull. <laughs> what? I don't know why I read that one. Are you okay? I'm reading chat. Half the time when I just say a random sentence, I'm just looking over here and just parroting something that somebody wrote. You head off into the city once more. The sky is blue and pink. The streets are suddenly alive with activity. People roam the streets, calling to one another and talking. Musicians stand on street corners, playing lively jigs to passerbys. 
A nearby building pumps yellow tinge smoke into the air. You make your way along the busy, bustling streets, marveling at all the people. They do not realize that they are ghosts. Ghosts. Quests. Thoughts. Hmm, that one's fine. Ghosts. Thoughts. Quests. Eh, that's alright. Their faces express the usual range of thoughts and feelings. Happiness, fear, anxiety, humor. They do not seem to realize they are no better than ghosts. That once the light from the tower is moved away, they will be long dead once more. Whoa. I have to turn it this way to see this. Um, first things first. Let's go... Should I go to the smoking building first? Or should we explore over here? Do choices matter in this game? Yes, they do. Uh, let's go to the high city. I'll turn it a little bit when I go back. You follow the winding, climbing, stepped streets into the upper reaches of the city. Low hovels and clustered dwellings are replaced by larger buildings, mansions, palaces, and central offices. You pass a familiar building daubed in red paint with two doors. Look at the building. Above one door is a sign with a picture of a fang tooth. Above the other is a metal implement that looks like a small pair of tongs. Tooth door, tong door. Tooth building. Go in the tooth building. I have a lot of teeth. That's right. That's right, Lorag. Lorag in the chat right now. That's a name that's been around for a very long time. Lorag. Let's go in the tooth door. You open the door to find it leads into a wide hall, which the other door also opens into. In a large chair at one end sits a man with a tight-fitting leather cap. On a low table at his elbow rests an array of metal implements. He stands as you enter. That just scared the fuck out of me. I thought that was him. Barking at me. Greetings! Are you here to buy or sell? A strange question, since there appears to be nothing on sale. Unless the goods are all behind the curtain that covers the back wall. What is your trade? You didn't see the sign? Uh... You're a blacksmith. You're a dentist. You are a supplier of magical artifacts. Oh, it's, it's a dentist. You're a dentist. He winces. That is a nasty word for it. Hmm. It is as though I called you a conjurer. He shuffles a few documents on a low table by his arm. But do I take it then? You are simply not in the market for teeth. I have teeth. I have enough teeth. Teeth? What kinds of teeth? I have teeth to sell. He leans forward. Hmm. Your own teeth? Or those of others? You would buy my teeth? I have creature's teeth. A dentist that sells teeth. That's rad. Sell your teeth. <laughs> I feel like we did this before. I think the chat was identical. Like seven or eight years ago, whatever it is now. I feel like the chat was identical. Sell your teeth. See, we just do it again. What's the worst that could happen? Let's do it. It's whatever. You would buy my teeth. Indeed, I would. The man peers closely at you and then nods. One of your molars, perhaps? A molar from good stock is always a precious commodity. What is a molar? I am no kind of stock. My teeth are not for sale. How much for a molar? 
What is a molar? You ask appalled. Oh, my apologies. I took you for a sorcerer. Teeth are valuable, indeed indispensable, component of what we call summoning spells. So a giant's tooth may summon a giant, and a snatacat tooth may summon a snatacat. A human molar in good condition can be used to summon a subservient human, which, as I'm sure you can imagine, has tremendous uses. What is the spell for summoning a human? You demand. This is no magic you have heard of previously. If your masters didn't teach it to you, then I think it's best that you don't know. Besides, I merely sell the teeth. How much for a molar? For one of yours? Oh, I would pay 30 gold pieces at least. You're strong and intelligent. I can see that much from the curve of your incisors. Would that seem fair to you? 30 gold pieces? Holy, holy moly! That's not enough. <laughs> Should I try to get more money? Should we haggle for more? Let's haggle. That's not enough. Hmm. Perhaps I can go as high as 35, especially if the root is in good condition. A long root means the spell will last longer, you understand? I don't, I, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't know. No deal. No deal. My teeth are not for sale. I'll leave it up to you guys. Because I, I, I think we've done this before, but I don't really remember. It was like seven years ago. But, um, what do you think? Should we sell teeth? 35 gold is a lot of money. But I, I forget what the potential consequences of this are. What do you think? Should we get a pull up? Sell teeth or not? 35 is a lot. I love the no. No. The one guy in chat doing the no. Don't do it. Fifty <laughs> fifty? Well, we'll see. Take sell somebody else's teeth. Well, I I took a human tooth, didn't I? Sell that too. I'm gonna have like 200 bucks after this. I'm gonna be able to buy an entire platter of food. All right, what are we doing? Not sell. Not sell. Wow. Wow. Okay. It was by four votes. Wow. See, don't ever tell me that your vote doesn't count here. If if only four or five more of you voted the other way. Mm-hmm. Okay. My teeth are not for sale. Very well. Do you have anything else to interest me? I have creature's teeth to sell. And from what creature? An ape. A human. You pull out the tooth, but the salesman shakes his head. My apologies. I cannot buy teeth from humans without knowing their stock and character. Humans in the wild are simply too... unreliable. <laughs> Anything else? Snatacats. His eyes light up. Oh, a most useful tooth indeed, and very hard to come by. I will give you eight gold pieces per tooth. I hope that is acceptable. That is too little. Ten, then. But I cannot go higher. How many Snatacat teeth do I have? Can I use them for anything else?
Other item? I have seven Snatacat teeth. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, well, we're going to sell all of them. I'll keep one. All right, sell three. Boom, 50. You take out three teeth and hand them over. The merchant whistles for a lackey who takes him into a back room and returns with 30 gold pieces. No more? What about ape? Ape teeth? <laughs> well, now, very few people want an ape tooth, but those that do are quite obsessed with them. I believe that they use them for cat burglary, but I am not sure. I will give you 15 gold pieces for each one, or 60 for three. What? How many do I have of those? I'm gonna have like a hundred and- I'm gonna have a hundred and ten dollars. Sell them all. Holy shit. No more? Alright, I'm keeping the- because these actually have uses and spells. Sell no more. You close your pack. I have nothing more to offer you. You ca you open your arms to raise a spell, but the merchant catches your arm. Try if you must. But we have a mini mite chained up in the back room. We don't want people testing out the merchandise in the shop, you understand. Uh. By the way, if you don't know what a mini mite is, a mini mite is a little fairy-like creature that if they are in the vicinity, magic cannot be used within the vicinity. Those of you that have no idea what what uh, it's being referred to here. Perhaps I will buy. Very wise. I have a few rarities in my possession today. A genuine Firefox tooth and my prized possession. The root of a rock demon. How much for the Firefox? You can take it from me. Mm, just five gold pieces. What good is a Firefox tooth? Curious beast, the Firefox. It contains the elemental nature of fire within itself. The teeth can be broken to ignite a small flame. Mm, let me demonstrate. Breaking an imaginary fang with between his hands. Are you interested? This voice laughing my ass off. What? We getting scammed? It's only five gold. Look, look at how much money I have. It's just five. I'm getting it. You hand over five gold pieces and receive one tooth. How much for the rock demon? Oh. Hmm. You are a man of taste, I see. Z quicks! He snaps his fingers and a stooped figure appears from the back carrying an enormous crystal rock. It is clearly extremely heavy. In perfect condition, as you see. Virtually flawless. Yours for a mere 32 gold pieces. Hmm. You look it over. The two shape is indistinct. Ridges and whorls in a crystal cube. But the sense of magic surrounding it is palpable. I don't need this. It's, yeah, too heavy. Too, yeah, too much. That's too much. That is too much. Too much is the price my servant paid in getting it. You will have to believe me on that, as the poor woman is no longer here to demonstrate her injuries. Oh, she's dead. Okay. Uh, I don't want it. You wave the servant away once more. You close your pack and your money pouch. He nods and smiles. Buy a previously considered tooth. You're rich, get it. Yeah, I want to keep my wealth. I don't want to just blow it on a big rock. I don't know what it does. Get him to bring it in again. <laughs> hey, can I see that rock tooth, the rock one again? Perhaps I will change my mind on one of the other teeth after all. What would you like? Hey, can I see the rock? No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Just buy all my teeth back. <laughs> all right, buy all my teeth back, sell them, buy them all again, and 
try to get out on top, right? I'm done. You peruse his stock once more, but do not find anything to buy. There is nothing more to do here. With a final nod to the man, you return to the street. You move along. The streets are quieter here, with few passers-by. But there are still no guards, no soldiers, no priests, no children playing. It's as though the whole city is purely a place of workers and foremen. A mining town, perhaps. Let's head out to the main square. You stop in a plaza. A woman passes by, wearing a wrapped headscarf and carrying what looks like a basket of rocks. Greetings, where are you going? Greetings, I am new in this city. And you are welcome, I'm sure. She seems in a hurry to move on. No doubt her basket is heavy. Can I carry that for you? What is the name of this city? What do you know of the Seven Serpents? How can I cross the lake? Can I carry that for you? Most absolutely not. I would not be doing my walk if I gave it away. She takes a wary step backwards, almost stumbling under her weight. And where do you work? But of course. I would not tell anyone. And where is it that you work? At the warehouse, of course. She waves her with her nose at the building with the yellow smoke. A warehouse of rocks. For now. Yeah. <sighs> Forgive me. Well, I must do my work. With that, she scurries away down the street and disappears. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Hmm. All right, I want to... We're going to turn this this way. We're going to turn it this way, and then we're going to turn it this way. Should I check the road first? Let me just check the road. There might be something right here in front of the gate. You leave the city by the old road. As the sun climbs towards its zenith, the wind picks up. The road passes under a large stone arch. Look at the pillars. The pillars you saw earlier have built themselves up into an arch which spans the road, casting a deep shadow as you walk through. Carved into the lintel stones in the old hand are two pictograms. Two pictograms. The first symbol is for metal. The second is for pain. This, it proclaims, is the city of Tinpang, a city of miners. Interesting. All right, so we're going to go back and do this, because I want to see what happens here. I don't have any food, yeah. Yeah, let's turn this over. This way. Mm-hmm. All the way up. Buy some goddamn food. That I can't. I'm try I I'm trying. Alright, let's go that way. In the right spot. Oregon Trail families are more well-fed than your rich ass. But guys, I became rich five minutes ago. I I would love to spend my money somewhere. I got I became wealthy four and a half minutes ago. All right, let's go check out the building. Okay. As the light around you changes, you seem to lose track of where you are. Streets grow firmer as you walk them. Walls fill with stone. Suddenly, there are people on all sides. You approach the smoking building. From inside, there comes a cacophony of sounds. You didn't think I was going to say that word right. Crashing and booming as though a rock demon was inside, fighting against its chains. Keep listening. You continue to listen, making out the sound of hammering and grinding above the echoes. This building must extend backwards into the mountainside and be an enormous cavern of activity. Perhaps it's a mine. You turn about as a small boy grabs your arm. Are you supposed to be inside? Get, get off me! Uh, yes, no, or shake him off. Uh... 
Yes. You lie. I thought so. You're the overseer from Manpang. You can always tell a sorcerer. Their eyes are rotten. Follow me. This boy talks well above his age and acts that way as well. He throws open the door and beckons to you. Uh, I guess where else I have to be. Follow him inside. You step inside the hot, smoky interior. In the factory. The inside of the factory is filled with a smoky yellow haze. About a hundred people are working away at workbenches. The sound of hammer strikes echo around the chamber. What are they all doing? You ask. The boy frowns at you. How did you suppose the powder was extracted from the stone? Each rock must be crushed, and the spore is extracted. Then it is processed. And he indicates a large contraption in the far corner. It is from here the yellow smoke is belching. You look away for a moment, and when you look back, the boy has vanished. Otto, each rock must be crushed. <laughs> All right, let's talk to a worker. Greetings, you declare. The creature promptly vanishes and reappears at another bench in the shop. What? One of the adults tries to ease you aside. The boy rushes over to scold him, and he mumbles an apology. Uh. Look at the bench. You look over one of the benches. It is piled high with chunks of stone. A few of the workers sort them by some criteria you cannot guess. Those they select are slid across the bench to a hammerer. The rejected rocks seem to simply disappear. Watch the disappearing rocks. In fact, it is not the rock which disappears, but the worker doing the sorting as well. They seem to flicker, reappearing a heartbeat later with empty arms or fresh stone. The boy reappears at your side. Please, you are distracting the workers. He moves you towards the door. Give me some of that powder. Give me some of the powder, you declare. Of course, the boy nods, vanishes, and reappears instantly with a small vial of yellow dust which he hands you. Then he indicates the door and you step through. You have seen enough. Yellow powder. What does that do? Is it for the smell? Stench, right? Yellow powder. I passed it already? Oh, yeah, there it is. So it's speed. Ooh! Okay, the caster must cast a spell on his or her own body. The caster will then become exceedingly quick and may run, speak, or think, or fight at three times normal speed. Speak or think. That's funny. However, this spell requires the caster to sniff yellow powder before casting. It's just drugs. It's literally, it's catnip. <laughs> it's just like cocaine. It's piss coke. Yeah. Yellow cocaine. That's funny. All right, well, sure it has a use. Outside. You step back onto the street. Look back. Looking back, you notice for the first time the roof of the warehouse. Sloping, but with several wooden beams that lean outwards, like open arms lifting to the sky. You gasp. The whole building appears to be a grimalkin, like those you saw as an apprentice. Magical constructions which gather magic the way a funnel gathers rainwater. Surely not. No one would construct a grimalkin on such a scale. It seems impossible. Lost in thought, you wander the streets. All right, let's turn it one more time down this way. Okay. All right, the question is, do I go this way? You'll see, Ernie. So let's see if there's anything I can do here. 
in this area? Probably not, but the question is, do I go to the lake serpent, the water serpent? Or should I try to go to this little town on the lake in the past and forget about the serpent and just try to buy something here? I could go back here, do this, try to buy something, come back and just move it. Yeah, we'll do that. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I need food really bad. That's true. If somebody will sell it to me, I'll buy it. Okay, let's go. This, this is not a place to linger. All right. Let's check out this town in the past. You continue to walk along the road. You begin to hear the distant sound of chatter and cartwheels on the stone. The moon gazes down impassively. The road begins to bustle with people who seem to emerge through the dust and mist and rumble past in their carts. You look at the people. Of all the strange things you have seen out in the wastes, this is the strangest. These people come from nowhere and go nowhere. And the same travelers pass by again and again, waving the same greetings down to you. You stride on through the crowds. After a few minutes, you encounter a small girl sitting on her own and staring into the distance. Look for her parents. Stop to talk to her or ignore her. Let's talk. You go over to her and squat down on your ankles. Greetings, little girl. The girl looks up at you sharply. You're in the wrong place, aren't you? Well, in a manner of speaking, yes. I am traveling. What do you mean? What do you mean? I can see it. No one else seems to notice, but I can see it. Well, you should find your parents. You seem to be lost. What can you see? I think it must be a curse. Adults are so forgetful. They forget everything. Where are your parents? You ask gently. Have they forgotten you? They've been lost. I think they must have forgotten themselves. She points up at the road towards the great stone arch at the entrance to the city. When did they rebuild that? She asks. Oh, shit. She <laughs> is she seeing? Wait a minute. This is... The arch has never fallen. I have seen that arch broken. Hmm. What do we do? So I just say, the arch has never fallen. What are you talking about? You didn't, there's nothing wrong. I have seen that arch broken. You tell her. I knew it. Didn't I say? You're in the wrong place. I could tell by the way you were looking at people. Are you the one that stole my parents? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean, I don't know? I don't, I don't know. I've killed tons of people. Lots of people have died, and I may have accidentally harmed quite a few. I don't know. Uh, they'll come back. I don't think I, I don't think you say they'll come back. I d no, I didn't do anything. No. She shakes her head and then stands abruptly, hitting you. Ow! I think you are. I can tell you are. No one else can see it, but I can see it. It was you, and I want them back! With that, she rushes away and is quickly lost in the strange mists. All is quiet once more. <laughs> you little shit. It's not a tumor. <laughs> the road curves gently as you follow it. You stride along the road. Travelers hurry past in the darkness. All right, let's buy some food, please. That's a throwback. 
How long ago was that? 2016? 2017? I don't even remember. Long time ago. You follow the road as it curves and bends and finally begins to descend until it reaches the shores of the lake. The bay is quiet. Though judging by the scattered litter, it has been a busy day. Lines of boarded up huts follow the curve of the shore and heaped here and there are piles of rotting fish parts left over from the great feats of cooking. Look through the rubbish. Without any thought to the smell, you dig through one of the nearby piles of fish heads, scales, bones, and other body bits from the day's catches. At the bottom of the heap you find a single gold piece, which hardly seems worth the smell and oil that now covers your fingers. Uh, look across the water. Hey, got an another gold. You walk down to the edge of the water and look out southwards. The surface is almost mirror flat, the reflection of the moon broken by only the occasional ripple. Familiar stars seem to lie on the ground, their patterns visible to all. A few things growl in the bushes near the shoreline. Look at the stars. The stars on the water are laid out like a chart, but a chart in reverse. Looking at them like this reminds you of what Elthira said, of spells having opposites. In the water, constellations you recognize above become others below. The Law spell, the Zap spell, or the Sus spell. Sus backwards is sus. How would that reverse? Doesn't that make no sense? Um, law is wall. Is that correct? Which one should I do? I uh, can I do all three? I might. I may. I think I can only pick one. Do sus. Zap actually. Do zap actually. He doesn't get it. Do zap. Oh, I can, I can do them all. You glance across the water, identifying the reflection of the stars of the zap spell. In the water, the constellation of Zen is formed. Perhaps the pattern of lightning negates the spell of levitation. Okay. The gum spell. I already knew this one. All right, gum. Okay. You find the image of the gum spell, whose stars form the shape of the zip spell. It would seem... The enchantment of gluing is opposed by that of teleportation. Sus. Closer to the shoreline lie the stars of the Gak spell. The new shape matches the Sus spell. Incredible. The spell of suspicion unbinds the magic of fear. Ooh. Suddenly, the waters smash open as an enormous creature bursts up from below. <laughs> It has three racks of nightmarish teeth. And they are open. That was a monster. And they are coming your way. Let's talk. Talk with animals. Wrapping the wig from your pack, you wear it and weave your spell. A moment later, the fish's thrashings turn into clear words in your head. Come on. Step into the water where I can taste you. Step in. The water is warm. I am your friend. Step in. I will not come closer. In a language formed of the slapping of your boots against the sandy shore, the fish freezes in its tracks. <laughs> it speaks. It mutters. It cannot speak. It is a mere insect. Insects do not speak. I speak. Then come closer so we may truly talk. <laughs> Clearly curious as to how this conversation might proceed. <laughs> I'm stepping in. I'm going in. Step in. You forward step into the shallows. The fish dives forward at tremendous speed, knocking you over. The wig falls. God damn it. I'm, I'm, I'm rewinding. 
I'm rewinding. I'm- I have to. I want to talk. I want to talk. Alright, the soft spell. That's Gak. The fix spell. Ooh, this is different. The image of the how spell. Whose stars form the shape of the fix spell. It would seem the enchantment of pathfinding is opposed by that of attachment. The goblin spell. Yep, zip. Okay, here we go. Here comes the fish. Cast a spell. I want to talk. Talk with animals. I'm your friend! I will not come closer. <laughs> How does it talk? It's impossible! Okay. What can you tell me of the seven serpents? I know of many serpents. <laughs> They live in the lake. I will show you. Come with me. I will not step into the water. <clears throat> oh, please. I try, please. I will not step in the water. Please step in the water, please. I will not step in the water. Please get in the water. Please, it's, it's comfortable. I will not step in the water. Please, just come in at the water. I'm not going to step in the water. Please, step in the water. Please, I'm not going to step in the water. Please, just step in. We can hang out. I will not step in the water. Please. All right, I'm fucking done talking to you. You've had enough. It is clear this creature cannot harm you if you stay out of the lake. After a few minutes of gnashing its teeth at you, it flicks its tail and disappears below once more. I wanted to talk. All right, let's go sleep. Looking across the water, you have a strong sense of how far you still have to go. You cannot hope to swim. <laughs> After all that stepping in the water and he just eats you. That's so stupid. Okay. Uh, you cannot hope to swim across, so there's no progress to be made now. I I'm not going to sleep by the shore. I feel like it's going to, like, eat me. Sleep in a stall. You find an open market stall and lie down under the shelter of its canopied roof. It smells of fish. But the walls should keep any animals at bay. Laying your pack down on the shore of the lake, you try to settle despite the cold. You have not eaten yet today. But you have no rations to fill your belly. <laughs> Dormammu! I've come to bargain! Dormammu! Dormammu! I've come to bargain! <laughs> oh, this is, this is ridiculous, huh? Hey, Dormammu! I've come to bargain! That's so funny. Please step in the water! Please! Release me! Release me that once! Okay, wait. You stretch out and rest. I, I stole that from chat, by the way. Just so I'm, I'm, I gotta give credit to the chat joke. You feel a strange calm settling over you. Run? Why would I run if I'm getting comfortable? You stretch out and rest. You feel a strange calm settling over you. Why would I get up and run? Just, I'm gonna run. Run! Something in the air. A poison, perhaps. You ready yourself to run, but then a voice appears in your mind. Do not be afraid. I have slowed time enough that I may speak to you again. It is Lorag. Alright, Lorag's back. You have returned. I have... I've been working to decipher your... <clears throat> parchment. And now I have the answer. Oh, I thought you had abandoned me. No! <laughs> but the parchment was older and stranger than I had expected. What did it say? The parchment spe speaks of the Serpent of Time. A creature who can see the moments to come and move freely through those long gone. A creature that exists now, but also exists long into the past. 
It swims in time the way a fish swims in water, and thus it cannot be killed. And what can I do? You must turn its own strength against it. You must catch the serpent in a cage of its own devising. I, I do not understand. The serpent swims in time, so you must take control of time itself. Oh. Of course, the writer of the parchment does not say how to do that. Then what can I do? There is a line of verse that maybe points the way. In time, all things must end at last. The back and forth of ages past, time's great light will cast a pall. Two times too many, time will fall. What does it mean? I don't know. Uh, then I, I don't know. He's just gone. <laughs> you seem left alone here, and your night is unbroken by dreams. Lorag was on FaceTime on the toilet. <laughs> I was trying to give him some character, like, oh, it's like a struggle to talk through time and space, and he's old, and he's... He's like, he's like, a, he's like 500 years old. It's probably hard to do that. <laughs> All right. Cool. You gained a huge amount of gold. And you got the sun serpent. Okay. Well, why do we, it keeps telling us we got the sun serpent. That was like 12 days ago. The sun rises, bringing with it chatter and excitement, as stall holders and fishermen begin to gather at the shoreline. The sun has not yet crested the last peaks in the east. Please cover the water, please! <laughs> Alright, we need to buy something. Okay. On the other side of the bay area from the waterfront is a line of stalls. Most sell food, grilled fish, and fruit. So there is also a bottle seller selling stoppered bottles. All right, let's go buy everything. You greet the fruit seller, who waves his hand across a selection. One apple, two gold pieces, uh, finest Zanzuno apples. Buy some fruit. Uh, I'll buy some apples. How many? I'll buy four. That's eight gold to you. <laughs> Visit the fishmonger. The fishmonger is a large woman who wields an enormous cleaver. I'll chop it and grill it for you, she announces, staring you threateningly in the eye. Four gold pieces per head. I'll buy some, please. This one's bigger than the rest, the woman advises you, pointing at one of the fish in particular. But the difference is not discernible to your eye. I'm buying four. You pay the woman 16 gold pieces. And she slaps four fish onto her griddle, squeezes them over with lemon, throws on a couple of unlikely-looking herbs, and then lets them fry. Was that Pavlovian? Was it? Was that guy that said that the burrito from earlier? After a few minutes and a smell that makes your stomach ache with hunger, she slides the cooked fish off the griddle and onto some thick cheesecloth for carrying. The skin is so hot it makes your fingers blister to touch. There was a way that food was described in books. Especially books about kind of older time periods. Or things that are supposed to be kind of a little older. They always make it sound so delicious. But I bet you this food stunk and was gross. Do you know what I mean? I want to eat this fish right now, but it probably was awful. <laughs> like, oh, the succulent meat of the fish. That fish probably is not very good. But I always read it and I'm like, mm, I want... Oh, what, what is... What, how are you describing this? Oh, this... A onion bulb. In water. Boiled. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. No, not really. I'm like, ooh, that sounds amazing. 
a, 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 a boiled onion bulb in water? And a chunk of bread that's stale and probably like three weeks old? Ooh! Or it's better because it's not affected by pollution. That's a that's actually a huge deal. Huge deal. This could be unbelievably succulent. It could be the best food ever. Not full of like microplastics. All right, eat one now. You eat one of the fish there and then before it grows cold. It is excellent, succulent, and clearly only caught a few hours previously. The woman nods. I see you're enjoying that. Oh, are these fish local? You ask as you finish up your meal. She looks at you like you must be stupid. The lake is right there. Where else would we get them from? Oh, can you introduce me to the chef? Can you introduce me to the fisherman? <laughs> Whatever for? You don't like my prices? I, I just want to talk to them. Uh, they're not ones for talking, our men, she replies. I want passage across the lake. This is real Karen behavior. No, this is reverse Karen, guys. This is like, oh my god, that was so good. I want to talk to the manager. Manager comes out. Unbelievable work. I love it here. This is amazing. You're doing an unbelievable job. Incredible job, all of you. You should all be very proud of yourselves. Why, why are you filming us? Well, I just, I wanted to document how much I love this place and how much, I, how wonderful this has been. <laughs> it's still annoying. <laughs> Two sides of the same coin. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't want... I, I want to go back and turn the thing around. There's too many fucking sides to this coin. <laughs> no matter. The lady shakes her head, but, less, but lets the matter drop. You finish your fish. Let's buy some bottles. We're, we're stocking up. Okay. You stop at the bottle seller's stall. He has shelves and shelves of bottles of all different shapes and sizes and colors. A few are filled, but most are empty. You greet the bottle seller. Ask about the bottles. You have a lot of bottles here. The bottle seller smiles. It's not my passion, if that's what you mean. <laughs> but I'm very, very good at making bottles, as you can see. Hmm. Let me look at the filled bottles. You scan over the filled bottles. Most seem to contain nothing but colored water, and are probably filled to simply show off the craftsmanship of the glass. But a rack at the front appears to contain Blimberry Potion, and the row behind is labeled Holy Water from the Temple of the Mule. We're buying everything. Blimberry potions, the finest source from the wet marsh of Lake Lumley itself. Seven gold pieces each. That's very expensive, you observe. It's not entirely the cost of the liquid. The bottle is of the highest quality as well. Hmm. That's a lot. That's 7, 14, 26. That's too much. <laughs> I'll take three. We cannot, we can't choose right now. If there's three healing potions, we're, I'm buying everything. How much is the holy water? I'll take three, you tell him. He hands them over carefully. Be careful of the glass. Holy water is most valuable. An excellent wedding present, for example, and good for magic. Hence the craftsmanship of the glass. Ten gold pieces. I'm bu I'll buy two. No. I, all my money. I'll buy one. He passes it to you. 
Look at the empty bottles. We're stocking up. You look over the man's collection of empty bottles. They come in every size, from that of your thumb to tankards as large as your thigh. There are thin bottles and portly bottles and bottles in every shade of colored glass. Some twist and corkscrew, some are delicately fluted. Most are very well made indeed. Bid farewell. You bid farewell to the bottle seller. You move away from the stalls. Okay, I have a ton of food. I have three healing potions. And I still have 50 gold. Do you think the fish is still there? Let's find out. These are tourist prices. You walk down to the shoreline, the water looks clean and inviting. Though it is almost certainly freezing cold. In the far distance, boats punt this way and that between scattered islands. Swim across the lake. Call out for a boat. Blow the whistle. Row the... They keep wanting me to do this. It's just going to break and he's going to come out and eat me. Uh, the water serpent's not here. I'm, I'm going to step away. We're not swimming in here. I'm going to go back. I'm going to turn this away. We're going to check out this area again. And then we're going to try to get the water serpent. Would the water... Would the sun serpent immediately die in the water? That's a... Good point. Maybe I'll try it when we go back. Just keep going. Uh, hold on. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Go back. Let's go back. We gotta go back. The Sun Serpent is only vulnerable to water. That's a... Okay. I want to hear the best part of this song, though. We haven't heard the best part of this song. It keeps playing. It loops a different way. coming up here. That part. Sap. God. I love these illustrations so much. I love this one. Dim. Look at this one. Magic. Spell protects its caster from most magics. I like this one too a lot. It's like bleh. I, I, this one's good too. Gob, yob. Mhm. Mm Look at the leg just sticking out. Sus. Stop. So this is what this is what they look like, right? Kind of like an invisible shield. That's cool. Big. This is another one of my favorites. There's just something so whimsical about all these. They're all whimsical and, and some, like, oddly terrifying. Somebody said, why are some of them black? Um, I think the ones that have a black background are, I think they're, like, storyline 
stuff? Maybe not, no. Because fog is not storyline. Oh, they found spells. Okay, that's what it is. It's Huff. I love this one because... Is that a wand? A tree branch for a wand or a staff? Cool. These are so inspired. I want physical prints of these. Yeah, it's... They're... They're, they're wonderful. Yaz. Invisibility, right? This one's cool because it's... You become invisible to any reasonably intelligent creature. Less intelligent creatures will only be partially convinced. They'll be partially convinced. So the, the, the dumber you are, the less this works on you. <laughs> so that, that, yeah, there's like a big green wig, right? They kind of think you are invisible. How? Yeah. Partially, partially, partially. Partial. How am I, am I saying it wrong? You are partially. What? Is this weird? Partially. Why can I not say this word? Partially. Partially? There's no N in partially. Why do I want to put an N there? Partially. <laughs> it's like I'm like shit faced. Yeah, you become partially uh, invisible. Partially. Why am I adding an N? Partially. Zip. <laughs> I'm talking to a rat. <laughs> Resurrect the dead. Oh, this one's cool. And then... Zed. Zed. The most formidable spell in lore, but no one knows why. In all recorded history, this spell has only been cast once by a powerful necromancer from Throben who was never seen again. Its effects are unknown. The necromancer's notes were found, but were crazed and unclear. Treat with extreme caution. I love how it's a question mark. It's cool. Zed. Cast it right now. <laughs> that was nice. All right. What were we doing? Oh, I was turning this around. Yep. The Canadian spell? Why? Zed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to throw the stone in the water. Let's do that. Oh, the orb. Not What did I say? Stone? The orb. No, do a poll. Befriend the sun serpent. Throw the Sun Serpent Orb into the water. You mean everywhere not America? No, no, don't. Not yet. Do it. Save it. Get a powerful snake bud. Throw the Sun Serpent at the Water Serpent. Throw it at the Water Serpent? Well, can I do that? Can I, should I try to do that? Or should I just throw it in there now? Do it at night, bro. Wait for night. Do they cancel each other? That would be crazy if they did. But I'll try it. Alright. But we need to rewind time then. We need to like get this out of the way. That sounds right. Alright, whatever. I'll try it.
We gotta point the uh, orb away. Come on, bro, please. The lady who had it said they had a doomed love. Oh, that's right. That's not just random. That's true. Please, bro. Come on, bro, please. Is it jiggle physics? What? What are you talking about? We'll sleep here. Um, you settle down. At least you do not need to eat. I'll probably eat again. Let's get up to like 20. Got a lot of provisions. You lost a huge amount of gold. All right, let's do it. Adjust the beam. And where should we point this? Is there anything I can aim this at? I don't think there's something I can do with this right now. Let's turn it backwards, like this way. I guess I could go over here, but... Yeah, we'll just point it out of the way for now. Alright. Water Serpent time. Why are you doing your bit voice? Uh, I think my bit voice is just me talking in my normal, just regular speaking voice. I think that's the, uh, I think that's what you're referring to. The <laughs> bit voice. I love that my, just me sitting here talking, is like, wow, he's about to do something weird. Something's about to happen. He's going to turn the camera on, and he's going to be, like, hanging upside down in his room. In, like, a Santa costume or something. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, you're just waiting for the camera to turn on. You already did that, yeah. Okay. So, you follow the road. I haven't been here in the... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I haven't been here. So, is there nothing here? How can you cross? There are no signs of either people or boats. So, there's, no, there's nothing here anymore. In the present day. Let me walk along the shoreline. For several strides, you follow the sandy shore eastwards, but find nothing of note. The shoreline ends in a collapsed seawall. Get some sand. You gather a handful of sand. In the distance over the water, a few bird-like creatures turn in the sky. Uh, let's walk the other way. You walk back and try the other way. Again, you come across nothing that might help you get across. Blow the whistle. The sound of the whistle scuds across the open water. A few minutes later, the undergrowth nearby begins to rustle. Wait. All right, all right. Hold your horses. I'm coming. What's your rush? Grumbling voice from between the leaves. You are the ferryman. I will be in a moment, if you'll just give me a second. You hear a sound which might well be the pulling on of one's trousers. The man emerges from a bush, a scruffy, unwashed individual, somewhat overweight, but with the shoulders of an ox. That he no doubt needs to be, needs to pull across the water all day. Was he just taking a shit in the bushes? He scratches his chest thoughtfully. Greetings. And greetings unto you, you scruffy tramp, he replies, scratching his nose as he speaks. Now, where to? I wish to cross the lake. Of course you went across the lake. <laughs> Everyone wants to cross the lake. Everyone that's around these parts, anyway. But I still ask, where to? It's my little jest. He wipes a little tear from an eye. Right then. Whatever you want on the lake, four gold pieces. Oh, I have the money. 
You pay him the money. He disappears into the undergrowth once more and reappears a few moments later, dragging a heavy boat behind him. Give me a hand, idiot! You are the ferryman. <laughs> I'll help. Together you pull the boat into the water. It bobs and rocks in the shallows, but seems seaworthy enough. Don't go with him. Why would I pay money to just be like, bye? I thought it said, let him cook. <laughs> Alright, get in the boat. You get in, and he pushes you out into the water and hops aboard himself. Okay. Away from the shore. The boat slides away from the shore. The afternoon is starting to draw on. The boat drifts. The ferryman stands at the prow, scanning the water. You're going to the ancient road. All the way to High Zaman? I'm just a trader. The ancient road? The ancient road? Used to be a thriving settlement, this. One of the most powerful cities in the world. Before the curse, of course. Cursed. This whole land is cursed. And everyone in it, too. But most of those in charge only care about land. Glancing down at the oars still resting in the boat, and then at you, he shrugs his wide, heavy shoulders. Plenty of places to see on Lake Aklala, and a few below. He hefts his pole and stares away into the distance. All right, what do you think? Around here? Uh, maybe this way. Get to the... Let's go around here. The ferryman pulls the boat onwards across the river. The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. It seems you have reached a part of the lake that is too deep for the pole. The ferryman points sharply at you and snaps. Take the oars, fool, and start rowing. Somehow his manner seems to have changed quite suddenly. His tone is altogether more aggressive. Take the oars. Take the oars. I gotta row the boat? Take the oars yourself, you declare, a hand falling to rest on your weapon. He nods twice to himself and steps down from the prow to near the rowlock, but he doesn't do anything for a moment more, letting the boat drift on. Near the island. The ferryman continues to row. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. Soon it will be dark. From his place at the oars, the ferryman watches you thoughtfully. You been to Timpang? You from there? Why do you ask? You reply, suspecting his question conceals more below its surface. Strange place, Timpang. Was destroyed a long time ago, turned into a ruin. Completely abandoned. Long, long time ago, but people still come down the road time and time again, wanting ferrying from there. It's most of my trade. Where do they go, these people? Now, that's a good question. And the strange thing is, of all different places, some are headed for the horns, trying to get across them, since the bridge is gone. Others want the Zaman Road, but are meaning to turn south to the sea. Others still think the fortress will harbor them. The fortress? The fortress of sorcerers. That's what Manpang was called before it became Manpang. Before the Archmage really came into his own. The ferryman takes another long pull on the oars. Do any visit the islands? The islands? Now why would they do that? All the islands are empty. Step it up. What do you mean step it up? What? Step it up. Step it up? <laughs> Step it up? Okay. Why are they always empty? Step it up? Were they always empty? Hmm. Most likely not. Used to be a busy lake, this... <laughs> well, hmm. I can see you'll never be setting foot in Timpang, anyhow. 
You've come to within reach of the bay of a low island. Go ashore. The ferryman pulls at the oars in a regular rhythm. I'll get out here, you say. He tips his hat as you approach land. Call if you need me again, he remarks as he ships away. The evening is drawing in. Get out of the boat. The island is a rocky and barren place. In the center is a rise of land from which a tree grows. In the shallows stands a tall pole from which hangs a bell. Look at the bell. The bell is set with a silver clapper attached to a rope. The wind shifts a moment, bringing with it a terrible stench. And then the smell is gone. Ring the bell? Or explore inland? Let's just ring it, whatever. Ring the bell. You tug the rope and the bell rings with a clear and steady chime. After a few minutes, the boat slides out of the mist of the lake towards you. The ferryman hops down into the shallows. You again? Climb aboard! Ah, uh, never mind. You wave him away, he shrugs and pulls off across the lake. Yeah, sorry about that. Explore inland. You leave the shoreline and head inland. You circle the shoreline of the island to the north as you climb your way up the rising stones. The surfaces are slippery with thick moss and vegetation. Suddenly, your easy pace is interrupted by a cry from somewhere inland. Listen. You stop to listen. It is a human voice. You make out two words. Stay away! Keep listening. You make no more movements, not wanting to give away your presence. Stay away! Analander! Stay back! Don't come closer! You hesitate on the rock. Surely this is a trap. Analander, he knows, knows who I am. Approach the voice. The voice's whimpering and dire cries continue. You climb further around the island, a little higher at every step until you reach the island's peak. But as you approach, you realize it is the lip of some kind of pit. Hmm. I mean, sense danger is easy, but read minds? Is somebody close enough to read minds? Big is always useful, but I feel like I don't want to give my presence away. Tell is free. We'll do we'll see. See if anyone's close enough to read the minds. Removing the skull cap from your bag, you cast your enchantment. Reaching out with your mind, you detect the faintest sense of a nearby creature. The voice is not an illusion, nor a mimicking creature, but a true human intelligence. But it is very faint now, and must be close to the point of sleep or death. Reassure the creature. You reach out with your mind to reassure the creature, but the presence of your thoughts seems only to make its pleas more panic-stricken. Stay away! Please stay back! Hmm. Climb to the pit's edge. You clamor upwards. The voice does not stop its constant warning. Between sobs, it calls. Analanda, stay back. Come no closer, please. Stay away. Stay away, no. You clamor up and over the edge of the stony pit. There is a single bare tree at the pit's heart. But tied to the tree, head slumped forward, is a sight master. His eyes are shut, but he still calls out. Stay away! Stay away! What is the danger? You call from the edge of the clearing, 
not quite daring to approach. The site master sobs in reply, his eyes still firmly shut. Please, just stay away. Leave. Leave me. Tell me more so I may defend myself. Let me look. I'm going to look around. Let me just look. I will not leave you. I will not leave you. The sight master stops short in his crying and tilts his head. Is that you? Annalander, is that you? You recognize his voice, of course. This is none other than the sergeant at arms from Annaland, who spied the path ahead for you when you crossed the wall. He has none of his magnific magnificent strength about him now. It is I, you murmur. The sightmaster shakes his horned helmet in despair. You should not have come. I tried to shout. I hoped you would turn back if you hurt me. What is the danger? The sightmaster's body racks with a sudden pain. Oh, Annalanda, how I long to look upon your face. It will be of great comfort to me. What happened to you? You ask, horrified. The sightmaster shakes his head pitifully. His eyes, you notice, are still firmly closed. The worst thing that can be done to such as I, he murmurs. I'm going to cut your bonds, you tell him. <sighs> do so. But do so quickly, and then run. I have kept my eyes shut for seven days. You cannot imagine the pain of it. I cannot keep them closed for much longer. What happens if you open them? You perhaps know of the red eyes of Kare. If I open these lids, what is behind them will burn everything they see. But I am a sight master. <laughs> you hurry over to the man and slice through the bonds that hold his arms against the tree. The Archmage knew you would come this way. He knew you would search the islands on your journey. I am not the only trap that awaits you. You must tell me what you know. Uh, uh, he gulps. <laughs> I'm going to fuke. Beware the other islands. <laughs> For one waits the most powerful of the seven serpents. The serpent of time himself. Beware. He means to kill you. Cover it. Don't open your eyes. Don't look at me. I don't want to burn. Cover his eyes. <laughs> Should I? I? Cover his eyes. Quickly, you tear a strip of cloth from his cloak and bind it around his eyes. But the sight master shakes his head. My eyes carry the power of the under-earth. A mere strip of cloth will do nothing. Run, Annalander. Run. Remember, I can see far. His freed hands are lifting to rub his face. How can I defeat the Time Serpent? Well, I, I do not think he can be defeated, for he is faster than time itself. I heard Batman say this. Stay away from him, Annalander. Birdman said this. Help him stand. You help the weakened figure to his feet. Hard to believe this is the same creature who all but bested you with his staff back in the training grounds. He is now nothing but a shadow. He squeezes your arm, perhaps thinking of similar times. Then he grips the tree to support himself. Go now. You clasp his shoulder once, then turn and scramble away down the stony gully. The sight master's gasping breath echoes after you. You head back to the shore. Fly, you fools. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh-huh. I can't believe he knew Batman. Back to the shore.
You return to the shore of the lake. The pole with the bell marks the edge of the water. The sightmaster's desperate whimpering is carried to you for just a moment on the breeze. Black, gloomy clouds roll across the sky, flowing from the east. I don't want to jump in the water. Jump into the water? Where's the bell? Don't I, I need to ring the bell. Should I just eat all of my food? It's going to get ruined. I took too long? I need to eat. I'm going to... All my food is going to... I have to eat all my food. Is all of your food perishable? I spent like 50 bucks on all this. What what gets ruined? All right, let me see what gets ruined so I can eat it. I'm going to I got to jump in the water. Let me see what actually gets ruined. Jump in the water. When, what? Hold on. Once again, your fragile possessions are ruined, including the goblin's precious parchment. Your spellbook is getting soggy, but all your soft food has been ruined. Do I still need that? It's all the fruit. Okay, I have to eat all the fruit. Wait, what? Hold on. How far back do I need to rewind? Rewind and don't ring the bell. Oh, that was ages ago. Don't ring the bell. Re Ow, my chest. Ow, that fucking hurt. Ow. <laughs> Shit. Okay, I'm good. Ugh. I'm alright, I'm alright. I rang the bell, he comes to the shore, and he's like, what do you want? I'm like, leave. And then he leaves, and I now I have to rewind, like, 30 minutes. Okay. Um. How far back? An island. God damn it. Well, we'll just do it all over again. This time, don't ring the bell. Explore. We'll speedrun it. Okay, listen, the sight master, listening, okay, this is a trap, don't come over here, okay, uh, climb to the pit's edge, stay away, yep, okay, what's the danger, look around, tell me so I can defend myself, yep, this is the sergeant at arms, it is I, um, what's the danger, let me cut your bonds, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what happened to you? Uh, I'm gonna cut your bonds. Do so quickly. What happens if you open them? The red eyes of Kare. Um, okay, uh, tell me what you know. What do you know? How do I defeat the time serpent? Okay, yep, okay, cover his eyes. He says, doesn't matter. Okay, help him stand. Go now. Okay. We're good. Back to the shore. Look at... That's... God damn it. Okay, look at the bell. Ring the bell. You again? Okay, yes. Get aboard. You clamber into the boat, and the ferryman pushes you away from shore. Let's continue. The ferryman whistles tunelessly as he rose. The sun has almost set and the sky has turned a deep purple. It will be dark soon. From the island at your back, there is a sudden violent scream. You look up to see a flash of flame rising into the sky. The Sightmaster. It would seem the Sightmaster chose to look down when he opened his eyes. You travel for a moment in silence. 
Too bad. What can you tell me of the seven serpents? The seven serpents? Hmm. Well, there are seven of them. But there's only one you need to worry about. Which one? You'll see soon enough. His expression is distant and glazed over. He has stopped lifting the oars, and yet the boat still moves onwards across the water as though compelled. What is moving this boat? There is no reply. He does not seem to have heard you. His face is static and unmoving. Shake him! You reach over and shake his arm. The ferryman's mouth falls open. A curious hissing sound emerges. Jump overboard! Help him! Help him! You reach out to catch him as his body slumps sideways and a plume of thick smoke emerges from between his teeth. His body remains in place for a moment and collapses like a limp sack, slithering into the bottom of the boat. Oh, shit. Uh. Look at the ferryman. You bend down towards the ferryman. Nothing remains but for a pile of clothing. The swirling creature overhead becomes agitated and starts to flicker and waft in your face. Its gas is choking and noxious. There is a choking smell filling your nostrils. Uh, the gale horn is so useful. I'm using it. Oh, wait, what? You gather the starlight into alignment around you, raising the horn to your mouth and playing a loud tone. The creature, the air serpent itself, struggles to hold itself together in the face of the blast of wind from the horn, but it cannot manage it. A moment later, it has been blown, quite literally, to smithereens, and all is quiet. The boat rocks twice, then falls silent. You have now defeated five of the seven serpents. Time to resume your journey. Only two more remain at large. Oh, shit. So, <laughs> where's, where's the water serpent? Rip Bozo. Air Serpent lost to air. Alright, I'm going on, on the lake. <laughs> You'll see soon enough. I have like fucking three little pigs, this guy. And he's just gone. Like, hey, motherfucker lost to a fairy tale. Uh, I gotta pee. I'll be right back.
I'm back. Hi. Hello. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. <laughs> Why do you sound so sad? Uh, I'm trying to do this thing when I come back from BRBs where I talk very, like, quietly. Because <clears throat> with a microphone compressor, if I talk, it just, whoa, I'm here again. Wow, loud person talking. Okay. Another night begins. You should find a place to sleep, especially after rowing all day without eating. You, but I, hold on, I see a lot of people just taking their seats right now. Yeah, I see this, the, sitting in the theater, but we got a lot of people coming in. Yeah, I'm, I'm really apologize about the line at the concession stand, uh, but it's, uh, we'll, we'll wait for people to sit down. <clears throat> Alright, I, I, I think enough of you are sitting down now. You stole my seat? I'm on the stage. You supposed to be on the stage? <laughs> Classroom? Alright, let's go. You pull on the oars sliding forwards through the water. I'm Serpent's here. Uh, let's check out this little... Or this, like, hut house or whatever it is. You row the boat onwards across the water. The first few stars appear. Every stroke is hard through the strange, thick water. You pause for a moment. Several yards ahead, the water is bubbling upwards. Approach it. Cautiously, you skulk towards the frothing water. Closer in, you start to notice that as each bubble breaks on the surface, there is a sickly smell. Inhale it. <laughs> Look down or move away. I mean, why would I do that? Inhale. You inhale cautiously. The smell makes your stomach turn, but somehow also fills your nostrils with a heady, warm glow. You feel giddy and uplifted. I don't think we do this a second time. The second time is I'll... I'm gonna do it again and just fucking pass out into the water. I'm moving on. Contentedly, you lift your oars once more and move away from the heavy, through the heavy water. Once a few furlongs distant, you look back and see the bubbles have ceased. Wait a little longer. You wait a little longer, but nothing changes. It seems whatever was here truly has moved on. Middle of the lake, or... Let's go near the island. I want to see what this is. I forget what this is. You row the boat onwards across the river. The oars draw whirls and ripples in the surface of the lake with every stroke. You've come into sight of a small island. This dude was huffing shark farts. It gave me two stamina. Okay, you row the boat onwards across the water and pull it up on the shore. More stars come out. Get out of the boat. There is no way to cross the water in the dark and exploring inland would be unwise. You will have to rest here. Unstrapping your pack on the shore of the lake, you try to stretch out despite the wind. You have eaten nothing today. Eat something. Removing one of your grilled fish, you break your fast. Then you lie back and try to forget your troubles. You dream you are trapped in a low straw hut. Its door is sealed with bolts made of bones. A small fire is burning in one corner, but quickly spreads until you are surrounded by flame. You feel yourself starting to sweat from the heat. Wake up. You wake up and find a ball of fire raging mere inches from you. Look at it. Oh, it's a firefox. <laughs> the fire does not seem to be fueled. It is a ball about three feet wide, gushing with smoke and steam. A moment later, it unravels, uncurling into a long animal form. It is a firefox, 
and it is coming for your neck in a blaze of fur and fire. Mm. Return the tooth. Use Huff again? Uh, I can't. I don't have access to it. Uh, I think I have to fight it. Every time I've tried to talk... Oh no, this is Raz. I'm just going to fight it. I'll make a shield. It's one gold piece. I got plenty of money. I'm glad I did that. You place a gold piece on your wrist and cast a spell, and a moment later the coin is gone. You feel the weight of an invisible shield on your arm. And it is upon you. You draw your sword and keep your shield high, ready to fight. We're going all in. Oh, that was a huge mistake on your part for doing that. The Firefox paces the earth before you, sparks of fire flashing across its fur. Driven by fear, you charge headlong. It rushes you, falling up and igniting as it flies through the air, only to skewer itself on your blade. It twists and writhes. It limps back, bleeding heavily. Dark blue flames gutter between clumps of ragged fur. The monster crouches down and snarls. All in again. Mm. Okay. The blow catches the firefox as it dodges back. As the firefox goes, grows weaker, its eyes grow redder, but its fur begins to turn ash gray. Firefox's eyes flash a deep, hot red. Uh-huh. No thanks. The slavering beast charges for your throat, but you react fast, dropping down behind your shield. But even the shield cannot protect you from the blast of its heat. Even with your shield, you are badly burned. Oh. It's... Okay. It's fire. Firefox snatch, scratches at its fur. All in. Sorry. You turn your blade for a vicious attack, but your sword cannot reach the firefox before it leaps. It howls and whimpers. Again. Defend all you want. I'm slowly chipping away. Okay. The creature's fur bristles. Okay. No, defend, defend. Yeah. The firefox runs for your neck. You fling your shield up and knock it away creature crouches low and growls. Well, you can't do very much. You just did 6.6. .6. That's almost all your attack power. That's fine. I'll just keep chipping away. You bring your sword around for a wild attack. Catches the firefox as it moves away. The beast is crawling, dragging its wounded belly through the mud below. Fire flickers along its back. I think it's coming in hard. Yeah. And see you later. You pull all your might into a sweep of your sword, hoping to finish the creature in a stroke. The blow connects. The firefox collapses. And then a moment later, ignites with a powerful flare. The pyre burns for a short instant, and then when it fades, the creature is tight skin around bones with no flesh left. You collapse back, exhausted and scorched from the encounter. With luck, the rest of the night will be more peaceful. Oh, we get a tooth out of this, right? The creature has no possessions, of course, but it has a fine array of teeth, including four front fangs that seem to glow with a faint heat. Take the fangs. With the tip of your sword, you dig out the first of the creature's fangs, but as you tug it free, the tooth cracks and suddenly erupts into flame. You drop it smartly, and the fire burns a moment longer before going out. What is with this guy in teeth? <laughs> I, I don't think I can take them. I'll try one more. Remove the remaining teeth. Working more carefully this time, you manage to extract two more fangs without incident. The third is harder work, but you cut and tug carefully, and manage to extract it successfully. 
You wrap the teeth in cloth and put them into your pack. They will come in useful should you need to light a fire. And tiredness overwhelms you. Time to rest. Your shield shimmers out of existence. Yeah. You used one provision and some gold, and you collected the sun serpent and the air serpent. So you have now destroyed five of the Archmage's serpents. <laughs> Jesus Christ, who scratched the Germa CD. <laughs> Firefox just crashed. Okay. <clears throat> the sun rises above the waters of the lake. This island is thickly wooded, but all the trees have died, and the whole forest is gray and desolate. By the shoreline is another pole with a bell. Pulled up in the shallows is a rowboat. I know that because it's mine. Black gloomy clouds roll across the you know, words that are hard to say, flowing from the east. Okay. Let's explore inland. I want to go in this uh, hut. Inland. You head away from the shoreline into the trees. You walk up the path from the shore to a small clearing in a dead forest. At the center is something that used to be a hut, but now is just three rickety walls and part of a roof. Look inside. Inside, an old woman is hunched over a table, scattered with vials, broken jars, and plants you don't recognize. She's mixing some kind of bright green paste and is so absorbed in her work, she doesn't notice you. Approach, stay back. I'm going to stay back and watch. The woman mutters to herself as she steadily grinds the mixture. Her white hair is in one wild clump that reaches her waist. She's wearing a filthy brown robe, which might actually be a sack. She looks up from her work to paw around the table eventually grabbing some berries and tossing them in. Half of the ingredients in her rundown hut you cannot name, but she appears to know what she is doing. She must be a healer or a witch. Greetings or try to sneak up on her. Why, like, like a Hitman game? There's like crouch and walk behind her? Stealth kill her? I always go for the greetings approach. I feel like it's, uh, that's the best way. Greetings, wise woman. She squints at you, sucking on her few teeth with a wet pop. Yeah, what? Who are you? I'm just a traveler. Well, why bother traveling out here? Not much to see here, uh, should I think. Besides ingredients. In Ingredients? You ask? For my potions. <laughs> she says, waving over her shoulder at a shelf groaning with concoctions and jars. These islands are brimming with herbs and dirt clumps I've never seen before. They probably all have a hundred uses. After so long in this cruel wild, this woman makes for unexpectedly pleasant company. What is your name? Uh, she screws up her face. You know, that's an excellent question. What do your potions do? I can never be sure. I, I experiment. I push the boundaries of the healing arts. I've created several new recipes that you won't find anywhere else. That sounds most interesting. You must be in great demand. Hmm. That sounds most interesting. Most indeed. See, I studied at the fortress, no less. They were so impressed with me, they suggested some independent study. So that's what I've been doing, alone for, uh, 47 years. Uh, but aren't you curious? Here, let me try something on you. Uh, uh, pick me up uh, strong enough to get you through the lake. Even up the mountains, what do you say? Uh, what's in it? You ask, suspiciously. She waves a bowl of green substance around excitedly. 
It's a very powerful healing potion. Uh, you won't find this one in some market. Oh, no. I'm doing some experiments that are so experimental, even I don't know what I've put in it. But there's some all oh, scap, flattened goblin hair, a bit of unicorn meat. Uh, that's mostly for flavor. Goblin hair? What? No, I never said that. Why would I put goblin hair in a healing potion? That is what you said. Goblin hair would be all wrong. Uh, it's a cure for baldness. Now, I distinctly remember telling you that the potion has all scap, catfish whiskers, and levitated sand for the color. So drink it. Um. Did I drink it? The potion slides down your throat. Your legs begin twitching and wobbling violently. Every step is a frenzy of bending knees and feet moving in random directions. You spend a few minutes in the nearby forest bashing into trees and kicking underbrush before you gain control of your legs again. What? You return to the shore of the lake. The wind makes the bell shimmer with sound. The little boat is still here. Return inland. You move away into the thick woods that cover the island. Um... We're going back. You head away from the shoreline into the trees. You find nothing new. You head back to the shore, but on your way back through the long grass, you trip over something protruding from the ground. It's a small half-buried shrine that you passed right by without noticing on your way up the slope of the hill. Look at the shrine. You kneel to examine the tiny carved totem. It is barely a foot tall and sculpted in a curious, half-deformed human shape. At least half of its length has sunk into the ground, or else it is so old the ground has grown up over it. There's a little writing near its base, mostly obscured. Bro, don't do it with the with like the ape. <laughs> clear away the mud. Pray at the shrine. I don't know if that's a good idea. Let's clear the mud away. You clear away a little of the mud around the base of the idol to reveal a few characters. Why? N. The figure's face has been largely dissolved by rain and wind. Its hands are held out, but they are empty. Don't betray the monkey. Say no. No, don't do it. That lady just gave you dishwashing liquid to get you out of her house. Ask the ape for health and then get rid of him. That's so sad. <laughs> that seems so, so cruel in a way. What do I do? Should I? All right. It's a, this is a chat choice here. Uh, there's an opportunity to get a new god. Make an offering. Slash pray, or leave with the ape. It's very important. Ape gang, stay strong. <laughs> Make an offering. Maybe get potentially new, a new god, which has, all the gods are different. They all have different kind of temperaments and different things they do, and if they help or don't help. The ape is pretty reliable. But, I don't know. It's up to you. Could be some interesting new things to do with a new god. Ape has never helped once. I can think of at least two or three cases where the ape has helped pretty clearly. Chat seems pretty passionate about the ape. I think it's just, there's a really fun emote. And the other god doesn't have a really fun emote to do. I think that's the problem here. <laughs> no, it's more than that. 49%? Hold on. What were, the, were, there, were there three choices? One by three votes? 
Oh, I think we need to do this again. Yeah, we have to do it again. Because make offering and pray. We need to do it again. Because 25 people said pray. They wanted to leave the ape. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is... This is te technically... Technically, leave has 49. Make offering and pray has 51%. You understand? We need to do it again. Yeah, we have to do it again. Technically, leaving the ape had more percentage. So, let's see. This is your... You gotta make the choice. You gotta make this choice now. But what about the fun emote? Nah, I... I didn't, I'm not saying anything. Either way, I think it, it, it's interesting. I don't even know who this god is. I'm not sure I ever did this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's going to be like 10 votes. It's going to be 5 to 10 votes. So if you're sitting there going, Should I click that button right there? Nah. Mmm. What's going to happen? It's almost over. Oh, it's over. We're about to leave the ape. Fuck you, Jervo. What? I'm le Hey, I'm leaving this up to democracy. 5149. No, 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 no. Hold on a second. The first poll, the ape still did technically lose. 2% for prey and 49% for offering. I... That's... That's true. That is true. I want to see true, 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 true. I want to see true, true, true. True, true. Yeah, that's true. Very... It's true. Yeah, true. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Ape. I'll take the full health. Everyone, can we all say, the Ape has been with us for a very long time. It was always good to us. Always helped us. Always wanted to make sure we were doing alright. Remember that time we were in the mine and the mine collapsed? And the Ape held up the stones before we can, to get us to get out? Remember when we fell down the hill and the Ape gently... Gently guided us down the hill. Thank you, Ape. Maybe we'll see you again another time. You bend on one knee by the shrine, intrigued, and ready to make an offering to this strange god, whoever he may be. As you sit, a voice enters your head that you have not heard before. Do you make a gift to the god of the gods? What gift do you require? The voice falls silent, offering no answers. A gold piece, food, a vial of holy water. Hmm. A vial of holy water. You unstopper a vial of shimmering holy water and pour it over the idol, bowing your head. The liquid runs down the broken face like tears, but nothing else occurs. Offer a gold piece. You place a gold piece at the base of the idol, but there is no change in the carvings across its surface. Nothing happens. You take it back. Offer food. You place an item of food down at the god's feet and bow your head. Nothing happens. You take it back. Clearly you have nothing worth offering to this idol. You stand once more. A small corner of stone falls from the idol's back to the mud below. Pray at the shrine. You pause to pray at the shrine, but if it ever had any power, it seems to be long gone. You sense nothing from the old stone. 
you head back to the shore. Hey. The ape. Hey, I didn't I didn't want to do it either. I I didn't want I wasn't part of that. It, I, why would we ever leave you? You were super good to us. It was we were just joking around. Don't take that personally. What? I wonder what you need. What is that? What god is it? Will you guys be mad at me if I rewind to get my items back? Or do I... Is that what I deserve? I think that's what I deserve. You deserve it. You did it wrong. <laughs> Rewind, it's okay. Wait, can I? Hold on. I'm curious. Look at the shrine. Clear away the mud. Make an offering. Do you make a gift to the god of gods? I do. You cry. Fuck. Clearly you have nothing worth offering to this idol. You stand once more. The voice intones once more. Do you refuse to give a gift to the god of the gods? I do. You repeat. Then you break your promise to Yubran, intones the voice. <laughs> I apologize. I do. Should I just keep saying I do? I do. You repeat for a third time. Your offering of a promise broken is accepted. You may follow me, fickle, worthless mortal. Wordlessly, the ape moves away from you. Your mind is empty for a moment, uh, then seems to inflate in size as a huge presence descends to fill you, like air filling a pig's bladder for a game. A voice more ancient and powerful than you have ever encountered before introduces itself in grave tones. Oh! Do you accept this guy? Accept! You open your heart to worshipping this new god, but it does not seem to notice your attention. The promise broken, thus spake you, Bran. High of highs, lord of lords, god of gods. At your feet, the tiny idol explodes to nothing, as though it had never been more than a worthless dream. Still reeling, you return to the shore. Ugh. You, Bran. The life changer of is God of the gods, a truly supreme being, supremely powerful and supremely distant. You may pray to Yabran, though as God of gods, he can offer little aid. He can do little good for mere mortals. What's the, what does he do though? Can he do something eventually? I wonder if he's powerful. You just... <laughs> God complex? Thanks, chat. Thanks, chat. Thanks, chat. He sucks. The life chain... Uh, this is gonna be an opportunity where I'm gonna pray and he's gonna be like, you know, it amuses me. I will give you ten gold for fun. Like, we... This is... We're amusement to you, Bren. You're getting ghosted by the god of gods. We're keeping, yeah, I'm keeping your brand. There's got to be something going on with your brand. He's genuinely useless. No way. No, he's the god of all gods. This is Odin. We have o Odin is in our fucking backpack. There's going to be an opportunity for something to happen there. He's supremely distant. <laughs> I mean, being supremely distant. 
is that's that's something that's something else i'm very distant i'm kind of distant i'm incredibly distant supremely distant is like trying to call me like kind of opening up my window and being like hey person in china can you hear me <laughs> no no that's supremely distant that's not happening That is the definition of supremely distant. Okay. Let's continue. Please rewind to save ape. He's just going to complain occasionally. That's kind of funny, though. I, I think that's funny. No, we, we have to keep some things. The ape is dead? The ape is not dead. Look, the ape left my playthrough and possibly found you in your playthrough. The ape left me, but he possibly found another soul like you. All right, let's go. <laughs> uh, all right, well, we're going to go down here. You row the boat across the water. The moaning winds pull at your pack and sword. Every pull on the oars is tiring. The sunlight on the water is all but blinding. Middle of the lake. You're talking about Ape like he's Woody. Yeah. It's all right. Okay, you row the boat onwards across the water. It is hot now. You are starting to sweat under your cloak. You sing a song from your boyhood as you draw on the oars. A song of fruit trees and warm milk and soft bedding. I'm not going over here yet. I don't know what happened. I, well, actually, no, I do remember this. I do remember, I think, what to do. But I don't want to spoil it because it's pretty cool. I think I remember what to do. We're going to go over here. You row the boat onwards across the water. The mid-afternoon heat fills the region. You lean on the oars, moving slowly forwards across the lake. The water falls strangely calm. Rowing becomes easier, and you cut quickly through the water. You'll be across the lake in no time. You notice a thin stream of bubbles off to the port side. Investigate. You row closer to the bubbles. They break around you and underneath you. And looking down, you see something is rising. Row away. Lean over the boat to look. I'm, something's going to jump out. You lean out over the side of the boat to look down. A narrow, dark shadow is hurtling up towards as though a spike of rock was being thrust up from underwater. It will break the surface at any moment. Okay, lean back into the boat. Sharply, you pull your head back, not wanting to be skewered by whatever is rising. The sudden movement jerks the boat, and you lose your balance and struggle to catch your balance. Steady myself. You steady yourself, trying to catch your balance, only to stamp too heavily in the bottom of the boat. It seems your foot has gone through the rotten wood. For the moment, the boat does not sink because your foot is blocking the hole. <laughs> Frey! Hey! You, you Bran! You Bran, I need you! You Bran! You close your eyes and raise a prayer to your Bran. You feel a great calm come over you, and a moment later, your foot is free of the hole in the boat. Water bubbles in through the broken wood, and the boat sinks from underneath you. Well, okay. Once again, your fragile possessions are ruined, including the goblin's precious parchment. Your spellbook is soggy, but remains otherwise intact, but all of your soft food has been ruined. Breaking through the surface of the water is a long, thin shape. It rises in a coil, and then... Can I rewind? You half... You half smile with pleasure at the encounter. It is the water serpent. Um, can I rewind? I need to rewind. I have to rewind. I need to throw this fucking or I'm rewinding. 
I have to throw the orb at him. I can't just break the... Hold on. Investigate. Okay, row away. You turn... Yes, we're fine. We're fine. I'm a cheater. That's fine. You turn the boat and row away from the rising bubbles, but you are not fast enough. What? Breaking through the surface of the water is a long, thin shape. It rises to one side of the boat in a coil. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Draw my sword. Cast a spell. Okay. Um... I throw a grenade at him. Sap. Cause depression. Rap. Talk all languages. Pulling out the green wig, you pull it onto your head and cast a spell, but the serpent only laughs at you. <laughs> you cannot compel me to speak like some creature. I only say this. I am a spirit of water itself, and I will drain my essence from your carcass. The water serpent is now free of the water and hovers. A massive shape against the dark sky. It stretches open its wide jaws. Throw the sun serpent. Throw something into the creature's mouth. <laughs> I want to throw an apple. Take this, bastard! Throw an apple. Ugh. Crunchy. Sweet. Overly ripe. It's the, it's the sun serpent orb. Throw my sword? Why would you ever do that? Throw the goblet of lynch bug oil? I, it's definitely the sun serpent. Please do it. I'll re I okay. We can, I'm allowed to rewind, right? Throw an apple. You toss an apple into the back of the serpent's mouth, but nothing happens. Imagine if it was like, <coughs> and you choke the water serpent to death. Imagine throwing an apple. I don't... Okay, throw an apple. You throw an apple into the back of the serpent's mouth and nothing happens. Throw your sword. You swallow hard and then toss the long sword into the soft flesh of the back of the serpent's mouth. It gags. And throw another apple in. You throw another apple into the serpent's mouth. You throw sand. Throw a handful of sand. You toss a handful of sand into the serpent's mouth. Clearly sand is not this serpent's weakness. Throw the goblet of oil. You... Wait, what? You toss the glob of lynch bug oil deep into the mouth of the creature, and then watch in amazement as it takes effect. In mere moments, the serpent breaks into splashes of water which rain down across the surface of the lake. The water falls quiet once more. Oil and water? It worked. Was that the Grimace shake? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. That's all right. <laughs> all right, let me re let me rewind and do it the right way. Imagine throwing everything in your backpack and something works. All right, let's do it. Let's do it the right way. Investigate. Okay, row away. Here's the water serpent. Cast a spell. That spell was... What was it again? Oh, right. Uh, it was rap. I did that incredible voice work. All right, here we go. Throw the sun serpent orb. You pull back your arm and lob the sun serpent orb into the open jaws of the water serpent. The serpent does not know what it is. It catches the orb, its eyes bright with cruel delight, and then it crunches down on the crystal glass. For a moment, you see the flicker of the sun serpent's fire before the racked teeth close. That was the sun serpent you ate! You shout manically, remembering that Fenestra told you the two serpents were mates. The serpent's eyes grow wide at your words. 
It opens its mouth to reply, huh, and a jet of flame erupts from its mouth. Its belly is beginning to pulse visibly with violent heat. Uh, move away. You... <laughs> You shift back, expecting an explosion. And when it comes, it is violent and bright. A ball of flame that makes the water below steam up in a great cloud. You have now defeated five of the seven serpents. Only five. Keep watching. You keep watching, convinced it's quite all over. And your instincts are correct. There's a flicker of movement in the steam, light begins to shimmer through the clouds, then it breaks, and the sun emerges, weakened but angrier than ever. I will kill you for this! I will grill every piece of you! Wait, what? Uh... It... Uh-oh. Look at it, it's almost dead! You spread your arms to cast a spell, but you are not fast enough. The serpent swoops. You will have to defend yourself. It screams in rage. Despite losing its fire, it will still be a powerful opponent. Oh, fuck you. you seven stamina, fucking eight attack power. Ah, full blast. Uh-oh. Water streams from the sun serpent's hide. And as they run, they claw deep scratches through the creature's hide. You twist your blade and strike hoping to skewer into its heart. But the serpent rears back and you cannot land more than a passing blow. The sun serpent's long body stretches and arcs. We're good. You drop back just as the serpent rises into a rage of talons and sharpened wings. You push away its force. The yellow scales on the serpent fade to gray. All right, I'm saying like 3.0. God damn it. 0 0.1. I'm always so afraid to do this because if they do like 1.0, it's awful. The Sun Serpent leans back, escaping the worst of the blow. 4.4. Yep. Good sword play. Okay, the light in the creature's eyes flickers for a moment. The serpent coils up, gathering itself into a shimmering pile of scales and teeth. Now we go all in. Because I think they're going to attack. It's okay. Bend. Clouds are gathering deep in the serpent's eyes. The serpent stretches its talons to the sky. Yeah, defend. All right, game over, GG. You take a step away as once again the sun serpent lashes out. You hold it back. You have not destroyed me and you shall not. <laughs> <laughs> A rapid slash bites into the serpent's hide. The sun serpent seems to turn black for a moment. Then its skin turns a heavy gray. And it falls. You stagger backwards, sweating but unbowed. The serpent is dead. You have now defeated six of the seven serpents. But you feel a flush of satisfaction. Only one serpent remains. None of the others will be reporting your mission to their master. The water falls still. Looking up, you sense a suitable formation of stars above you. Why would it give me an opportunity to do this? I thought it was going to be Zed. Uh, big? No. This might be to quickly get out of here. I don't think we need to do anything. We just row on. But no amount of magic will shrink the size of the lake. You row onwards. Resolute. You've come within reach of a rocky island. Not going over there yet. We're... Oh, this is it. I'm about to beat the third game.
I know how to win, by the way. Uh, uh, if... Alright, those of you that don't want to know... If you do not want to know how to do this... I would... Like, I don't know, come back and like... Uh, just... I would just leave. What about the new spell? Alright, those of you that don't care, we can talk about it. Here's how you do it. The Time Serpent is unkillable. He's imp it's impossible. But, if you point this over here, this over here, if you point, I believe it's at least three of these uh, time travel beams at the Serpent, you can kill it. So, no, no, spoilers. I just said, I just told you that. I just told you we were doing spoilers. I just told you. That's clever. Yeah. You ruined the game. I just, well, I just, yeah, he's unkillable unless you do the specific thing. So let's go over here, turn it on. I guess that instantly and I never played the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. The island is covered in dense tree cover. The top of a stone tower is just visible above the canopy. In the shallow water stands a bell. Your small boat bobs in the shallows. I despise the empty, dreary mortal coil. In tones, your god, your ran. Okay, dude. <laughs> is that it? You don't have nothing else to say? Is it? You're just gonna insult me? Okay. The path winds along the shoreline, skirting an area of dense trees. Then it ducks below the canopy. And you are surrounded by the calling of strange creatures. Insects and birds buzz past your face. From the shore, you saw a stone tower sticking up between the trees that fill the island's heart. But now you cannot see the way forward. And the path seems to twist and turn about. Probably go big. Your brand is just like us, for real. Uh, Tell? Why would I use tell? Zen? I could float above the trees? Hot is... No, how is safe. Let's do how. Safe passage. You weave the enchantment and a quiet voice begins to speak to you. The voice indicates a thin path that will lead to this island's tower. <laughs> With that, the spell fades. A flock of nearby birds startle at something, lifting suddenly into the trees. Uh, we're going to follow the howl. Trusting to your spell, you follow the narrow track between the trees. After a few minutes of walking, you come with sight of the base of a stone tower. It is heavily overgrown. The door to the tower stands open. Gnarled roots and vines have forced it open and are now holding it ajar. <clears throat> okay. The inside of the tower is dank and filled with mud, as though it has been flooded and emptied several times. Stone stairs curve up to a hatch in the roof. You gasp as you notice the walls, which are covered floor to ceiling with intricate carvings. Suddenly something lights up in a dark corner, a flame. Look at the flame. The flame seems to hover a short way off the ground. As you watch, it swells in size from a single thumb to a fireball size of a small dish. Call out. Who's there? You demand into the pooled darkness behind the flame. The fire has grown now to a full fireball of clearly magical nature, and in its light you can see what is holding it. It is a rough wooden frame of sticks shaped into the form of a woman with arms spread wide. It's a Grimalkin. It's a Grimalkin. Like those you saw as an apprentice. Magical constructions which gather magic the way a funnel gathers rainwater. Right, let's watch. You wait and watch. A fireball, hot and fierce, shoots forward from the wooden frame onwards towards you. Duck. You hit the floor and the fireball punches over you, not aiming at the door, but instead splashing up the staircase that leads up the tower. The room is dark for a moment.
Always dodge the left. Unless it is a fixed device that's shooting. Can I talk? Oh, hell yeah. Wait, talk with animals. Is a Grimalkin an animal? Let's find out. Is it an animal? No, it's not. <laughs> uh, okay. Look up the stairs. In the light from the Grimalkin, you follow the line of the staircase with your eyes. At the top is a trap door, sealed with a rusty old bolt. If the bolt is stiff, it might take some time to coerce it into opening. The fireball spell is completed and splashes across the stones of the staircase. Look at the Grimalkin. All right, we got to make a move. In the pause between fireballs and darkness, you can see a little of the Grimalkin. The frame is built from old, half-rotten wood, beams that were once perhaps part of a roof. A single upright forms the body and head. Its two arms are angled outwards to collect starlight. Starlight. It has clearly been positioned beneath the stars of Hyatt, Osiris, and Thara, and angled so the resulting fireball is directed at the staircase. For a moment, the tower is dark. Let's destroy this thing. I'm going to zap it. Great lightning. Zap. Consulting the constellations overhead, you bind the spell, winding a powerful electric force in your hand. Fire it. Then you fire it at the Grimalkin. It explodes in a fantastic display of power and fire. All the magical energy within burning blue, green, and purple. You're left gasping, half cooked from... <laughs> oh shit, I lost a lot of health. From the feet, but alive. With the Grimalkin destroyed, the tower falls quiet. Once more, you notice the carvings on the wall, forgotten in your battling with the Grimalkin. The carvings are beautifully preserved. Unlike in all the other towers you've climbed, they cover the walls from floor to roof, telling a story in sequence. The first panels show the construction of a great city on the shores of a lake by a powerful and proud people. Then the city is threatened by a series of avalanches and other disasters attributed to an underground demon. Several buildings are destroyed. You climb a little way up the stairs to pick up the story of the carvings. The destroyed buildings are rebuilt but a council of wise men and women are gathered to discuss the problem. They scratch their beards and comb their hair and rub their eyes in thought. And finally, they set to building a series of great towers scattered around the land. The purpose of the towers is not clear, however, but all seem convinced they will save the city from further disaster. They celebrate with raised arms. The final panels of the carving show a man in a horned helmet delivering some kind of equipment to the builders of the stone towers. From the symbols on this man's cloak, you realize he is supposed to be one of the Archmages of High Zaman. Each tower is fitted with a lantern, and the lanterns are lit. Birds freeze in midair, rivers cease. In the light of the lantern, clouds stop their scuttling across the sky. Below the level of the towers, the land is peaceful and the people are happy. It seems the light will keep them safe, and that is the end of the story. From here, you could go up the tower or back out into the tree. Okay. You make your way up the steps of the tower and open the hatch in the ceiling. Once again, the tower is topped with a movable cylinder and blue crystal. Activate the... Am I going to... I get health for this, right? This tower seems to be broken. You're forced to give it a kick before the beam begins to shine. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Boom. One. It seems incredible that anyone should have built these towers with their curious lanterns. Indeed, you cannot help but wonder what these towers did originally. What appeared in the land beneath the beam when the land was everywhere, lush and green. Where the light touches you, you feel suddenly much better. Look at the view. From here, you can see across the island to the water that surrounds it. More interesting is the shoreline further south. Where the ruins of two statues are just visible atop a broken landing sage. 
Must have been a Grand Harbor once. Touch the crystal. We're going to go here. Point it this way. He's losing steam. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Alright, adjust the beam. Hey, time serpent. You're in fucking trouble now. He's losing steam. It's always so loud. Aha! That's gonna be tricky now, isn't it? I think that's in the right spot. Okay, everybody. It's time to kill this motherfucker. Climb down. Bottom left isn't reaching? Uh, I think it is. Is it not concentrated enough? We'll find out. I can always just rewind. Is this the end? No. There is an entire another game. So it's already part four. That is just as long as this one. What the heck are you doing, game? What are you doing, game? Which you're going to play in 2025. No, that's not true. 2024. That's not true. All right. Let's go confront the time serpent. You row the boat onwards across the water. Night falls. You need to rest. Especially after so much sculling on an empty stomach. You row onwards. A short distance ahead, another commotion in the water appears. But this one is unavoidable. Leaping up from the water, a small school of flying fish are springing into the air and flying towards you. Ignore them. <laughs> Cast a spell. What can I do? Summon replica creature? Kin? No. Ought. Just throw a fireball at him. I could put a wall up. Let's do it. Let's put a wall up. I'm just putting an invisible wall up. They'll just crash into it. Wall. You spin the stars into your design, throwing up an invisible barrier in front of you. The fish collide directly into it, one after another, falling into the water where they lie stunned. The boat moves on, and the shoal is left behind. Okay. Between the islands, near the statues. Okay, we go, we're going to go uh, between the islands? Looney Tunes? You row the boat onwards across the water. The moon is climbing the sky. You pull on the oar, sliding onwards through the water. You've never rowed so far or for so long. In the fields of Chawberry, where you grew up, there was no open water beyond a few ponds. Nothing to douse the approaching flames. It does no good to think of it. You turn your thoughts away from home. It does no good to think of it. And you will most likely never see it again. You keep your eyes fixed on the distant shore. And pull for all you are worth. I think we might have to go down this way. Hmm. 
The moon sets, more stars appear near the island. This is now the dead of night. You have, you heave on the oars gliding forwards. You have come into the sight of a low island. Let's go. The night air is cold. The air is like ice. Get out of the boat. It is not- I don't want to go to sleep right here. It is night. You would do well to sleep here. Oh, oh god, I am fucking screwed. <laughs> He's like 50 feet in front of me. Laying your pack down on the shore of the lake, you try to rest despite the strange noises that float across the landscape. Uh, let's eat something. You eat the smoked fish and feel much better for it. Then you stretch out and rest. This is such a flex to sleep here. It kind of is. The night is restless with visions. Once more, you are falling into a pit of burning rocks. But every time you land, it is only for the stones to melt and you tumble down further. Through it all, you feel the heat of Annalan burning should your quest fail. You used one provision and you defeated the Sun Serpent and the Water Serpent, leaving only one more serpent to destroy. The sun rises above all the waters of the lake. The island is a pile of rocks, as though dumped from a giant's bucket. Near the shoreline is the bell for the ferry. Drawn up on the shore is your little boat. I despise water above all! Your brand declares. Shut up. Here we go. Inland. You head away from the shoreline up the rocky slope of the island. There's something very strange about this place. The air moves with insects who seem sometimes frozen mid-flight, but at other moments spin through the air. Clouds stop, shift, then stop once more. It is as though the whole island is running on ticking clockwork. The air shines and glows with the overlapping light from the beacons you have converged onto this island. It is as though a battle of elemental forces is being waged in the air itself. Look ahead. You creep a little up on stony embankments to try and peer at what is ahead. You make out a bowl-shaped depression in the ground. Some kind of pit. At its base lies something. A coiled shadow. But you cannot make out what it is without going closer. Return to the path thoroughly alarmed. Keep going. You continue climbing up the strange dead slope. The path turns and then descends into a bowl-shaped pit. What's in the pit? You crest the stony rise and look down into the pit below, where a coiled serpent lies sleeping in the middle of the intersecting beams of light from the towers. The creature has not noticed you yet. In fact, it seems to be still, the only unmoving thing on this busy, bustling little island. Okay. Throw a grenade into the hole. <laughs> I'm throwing a grenade. You craft the spell over one of your pebbles, then you toss the pebble at the serpent, and it explodes in a glorious, gory rain. You have now defeated all of the seven serpents. Something is happening to the island. It is alive once more. The first thing you notice is the clouds as they start to hurry across the sky. The grass begins to shift and move in the light wind. A few loose rocks skitter down the slope. The island is moving once again, and the light from the beacons fades from you. With all the serpents defeated, there is nothing stopping you from making your way to Mampang. I'm sleeping here. You take a moment to rest, absorbing something of the quiet of the island. The sun has not yet crested the last peaks in the east. But now your quest will not wait. You head back to the shore. How was it that easy? 
well, if you don't do this, and you come here, well, nah, you know what? You, you figure it out. You do it. You, you do it on your own, right? It's fun. It's interesting. You threw a grenade at him. Yeah, I know. It's interesting. It don't don't. I'm not gonna tell us. No, I won't tell you. Tell us. No, no. You you can figure it out on your own. You spawn camped him. Just holding a grenade. I will admit. That was probably the lamest way to kill him, or was it? Dude's just sleeping, and just threw a grenade into his fucking house. I mean, that was that like it was all right. It worked. <laughs> the time serpent. I am always. I am forever. I am before. I am after. Flashbang going out. Who do you think you are? I am! <laughs> That's like one of my favorite videos ever. What is actually over here? Corner of the lake. You row the boat onwards across the water. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. The boat bobs gently. You've reached a sheltered cove in the corner of Lake Iklala. At the foot of the highest mountain in the horns of Iklala. A narrow runoff channel snakes up the mountainside from here. What the hell? What? Why is he gone? I don't have a god. <laughs> he did, he did, he hated the water so much that he left permanently. That guy sucked. You skipped reading it? What do you mean? What? What are you talking about? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? I skipped reading it. Rewind and read. Wait, what? Did I actually miss that? What did it say? You return to the shore of the lake. The wind makes the bell whistle. The boat is bobbing in the shallows. I say this. Your brand begins. But whatever request he was abruptly cut off. <laughs> what? The voice of your brand disappears from your mind like a dream forgotten at sunrise. In its place, there is nothing, only silence. I say this. Did I, did I actually find like the comedy god? Like just the joke god in the game? He complained five times and left. How did I miss this? I didn't even read it. Your brand will leave if he complains enough. If he complains enough. So wait. After getting your brand, you're supposed to stay away from the water because he hates water. He was about to go off. He wrote... A fucking, like, five-paragraph text he was going to send me, like, telling me off. And then he was like, you know what? I'm just blocking you. And left. He didn't even send it. He did, he's like, I don't even care. Fuck it. I'm just blocking you. Okay. He can randomly complain at certain spots. What? <laughs> did... He was gone in less than an hour of game time. It's worth trying to keep him. You need him. I'll say this. Says nothing. The ape was always there for you. You ditched the ape for this asshole. It's a bit late to rewind, I think. Well, we're godless. We're going into episode four. Godless. Which is interesting, because it will get one. That's really funny. Okay, well, let's go. <laughs> I say this. He gets cut off. What, what do you mean he gets cut off?
What cut him off? Your character carries over? Yep. You row the boat onwards across the water as the sun climbs towards its zenith. The winds pick up. You have reached the south shore of the lake. The magnificent stone harbor is set between two towering statues of sorcerers. Who reach to the sky as though to pluck down the constellations directly. The Zamen Road. You could moor and step ashore, and the road to High Zamen begins from the harbor. You have defeated all seven serpents. Time, then, to put ashore and proceed to High Zamen and the crown of kings. And there it is, to the shore. You row the boat onwards across the water and pull up to the shore. The sun is hot. You have successfully crossed the wastes of Kakabad. The road to High Zaman winds south, east from here. Now the serpents are defeated. The only way is forward. Those of you wondering, you can just leave without killing any serpents. But it's um it has some negative uh there's some negatives to that. You can do it though. Look at the statues. You look at the towering statues on either side, a sorcerer on the left, a sorceress on the right. Each lifts a hand to the sky, reaching for the power of the stars, winding them, moving the constellations with their fingertips. The figures show might, power, and confidence. Magic, they say, is a force for the betterment of all. Lies, of course. The Archmage craves nothing but power, and must be stopped. Something glints between the statue's toes. Look. You look closer. Set in the wedge between the fourth and fifth toe of the left statue is a small blue crystal. Touch the blue crystal. You touch the blue crystal, and you are quickly dizzyingly high. Oh, this is if you want to go back and do anything. <laughs> yeah, you can just travel wherever. Uh, I don't need to do that, though. In case you want to tie up any loose ends or anything, you can go back. You can go pretty much anywhere. You can leave it. There's no time to waste. The road to Mampang. There is no time to waste. The Zaman Road. You begin the slow climb. Ahead, the stony road leads into the Zanzunus towards the fortress at Mampang and the final stage of your quest. You may yet be able to arrive in secret. You pass a fallen tree from which a sword hilt protrudes. Look at the sword. You look at the blade. The hilt is that of a very fine blade indeed. And scratched into the sword are two words. A gift. Draw the blade. You draw the blade smoothly from the wood. It is long, curved, delica delicately weighted, beautifully butterfly sharp. This is a blade of the Assassin's Guild, no less. In the far distance, a shadowy figure disappears from view. Ahead as always, you raise the blade and salute. Flanker. You've taken 24 days to cross the backlands. It is almost certain that the Archmage has received word of your journey by other messengers in that time. Who knows who the serpents told before you found them? You walk on dis- What? I took too long? I killed every I killed all the serpents. What do you mean I took too long? What? I, I took too long? We're fine. Upwards. As you walk, you are stopped by a man, bent double under a great load. His presence is most surprising on the empty road. You! <laughs> you going to high salmon? That is where this road goes. I know, I know. Ugh. I'm going home. Home is Karima. A little village over the lake, over the marsh. I'm sure you won't know it. I know it. Do you? Well, I'm glad. I'm glad of that. Uh, 
Only I was worried by something I heard while leaving. What did you hear? The birdmen up at the fortress were talking, you see, about the beacons. They said the beacons were emptying the land. I'm a simple peasant. I don't know anything about magic, but I'm headed for... I'm home as fast as I can, I'll tell you. Emptying it? You demand, catching his arm. Emptying it? How can a beacon empty anything? That's what they said. Uh, that's what they said. Uh, they said the beacons were wiping out whole villages, uh, leaving only bare rock and dust behind. It sounded so strange, but then I heard the rumors that Timpang had been turned to ruin overnight, and all the people gone. They said it's being done by the most evil sorcerer in the land. Who is that? They called this sorcerer the uh, Anul Anul Land. Someone saw him turn the light into Kariyama, and then it was gone. That's not possible. I don't know why anyone would want to do it. Kariyama is a harmless place, unless he wants to hurt it to hurt the Archmage. I don't know. Well, listen, uh, you look like a strong sorcerer. So I'll tell you what. If you see this sorcerer, uh, Anul Land, uh, you kill him for us, all right? <laughs> I am the Analander. The man begins to reply, then his mouth falls open and he cannot speak. He shivers. Curse you. You've destroyed us all. With that, he shoulders his pack once more and hurries down. Wait, I just told... The whole point of the third game is to avoid somebody from telling on me. And I just told the guy in the last second of the game, he's going to go tell on me. Oops. Upwards. There was once a grand road. There are hints of gold leaf on the corners of the steps, carvings and holes for lanterns in the pillars that line the way. But all has long since fallen into disrepair. The only inhabitants remaining are birdmen. Cursed to the air that shriek like demons to each other. Upwards. The sun sinks down behind the tallest peaks and its dying rays light up a sight you will remember for the rest of your days, however few or numerous they are. Mampang. Tall spires and sharp angles make the building look like a rusted blade. One thing is certain. Entering the fortress will undoubtedly be the most perilous stage of your journey. To Mampang. We did it! Your journey across the backlands is complete. You took 24 days to cross the backlands. In the course of your journey, you defeated all seven serpents, including the Sun Serpent. Why do they keep saying that? Do, I don't know why they keep saying that. They keep saying that. Encountered Flanker once more, left the Sight Master Sergeant in his last moments, met Elthira the Mystic twice, and met Din Tainta, the Sorceress of the Slopes. You lost your little finger, you learned that all spells can be countered. Of the Ram, a statue in Mampang, which can be sung to sleep, and not to eat from the larder of Throg. You collected a fantastic amount of magical artifacts. You are armed with an assassin sword, a long sword, and your original sword, and have four rations, 46 gold pieces, and a spell book. You don't like goat cheese. No, I don't. And I'm going to go like this because I'm about to get. Okay. Yes, I need to do this. So, how this game works is it generates a password to take to the next game. And I I don't want you taking my password because I, I want us to enjoy it together, our, our journey that we're doing together. So, I got to write this down. Why not? Because you'll, because you, I don't want, you'll go through and you'll beat it and you'll take all of my items. <laughs> All right, let me just, I just got to write this down. Yeah, that's episode three. Mm 
Let me write this down. Yeah, that's the that's the third episode. Part four is is part four longer than part three? I don't know. I think part three is one of the biggest ones. Two and four, I think, are, are episode four is please play it tonight. No, I think that's it. That's I think that's a perfect place to call it. That's a perfect place to call it. All right, let's uh, let's get the ending here. Can we see the ending? <laughs> Steve Jackson's Sorcery, Part Three. <laughs> I forgot to exhale. The Seven Serpents. Fighting Fantasy. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'm glad I actually came back to it. Again, this is a... It's, it's, it's just like such a wonderful experience, such a wonderful game. Crown of Kings is the last one before. Published in 27 countries, 22 languages, over 25 million copies sold of the fighting fantasy series. There were dozens of these books. Not sorcery, but other fighting fantasy ones. It's a lot. You know when you're going to start the next part? Um, not, uh, definitely not as long as it took to do this one. Honestly, if you guys are... Uh, there's, an, there's a lot of people here right now. It seems like a lot of people enjoy it. So I'll probably start it in like a week or two. I think one of the concerns with playing Sorcery for the second time was a lot of you that have been here for a long time have already seen it. And it was like, oh, we've have we done everything already? But I think it's so new because it's been so long and there's so many different ways to play it that, yeah. We could probably start it in a couple weeks. Uh, next stream is going to be Thursday. We're going to play Tree Pang 2. And then on Saturday or Sunday, we're going to do some browser games. Thank you for watching. That was Sorcery Part 3. It has been concluded almost a year later. I finally finished it. And we'll see you in a few days. Take it easy. Take care of yourselves. Have a great 4th of July. Those of you uh, Americans that celebrate it. Happy 4th. I gotta get the music going. What am I doing? Yeah, happy 4th of July. You need to play something else, you lazy ass. Come on, dude. Yeah, call your mother. Call your mother. Call your mother. Call your father. Have a barbecue with them. If you're, you know, in the United States. This dude ended at four hours and 20 minutes. Stoner. No one else is allowed to barbecue. You know, barbecue whatever you want. I recommend uh, barbecued corn. Grilled corn is one of my favorite vegetables. It's great. Did you sing the national anthem? Uh, grilled corn is great. Grilled corn with a bunch of butter on it. Ugh. It's the best. You're going to get some steak and corn? Hell yeah.
Yeah, grilled grilled corn goes insane. It is it is very good. It's been hot lately. Yeah. It was scorching here. I think it's going to get even hotter tomorrow. So those of you in the southwest, in the American southwest, 110, 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Woo! Nice elevator conver Nice elevator conversation, Andy. <laughs> ah, this is my floor. I gotta get off. Yeah, have a good one. See you guys soon. See you on Thursday. Happy 4th of July. Take it easy. Thank you.